look at it probably in a little more measured way. I think at the beginning of the year, pitchers are always more susceptible to injury. I think we're at a place now in the game in terms of utilization that everybody's training for velocity. They are not pacing themselves. They are trying to throw as hard as they can for as long as they can, period. Um, and I don't know that the pitch clock is the thing that's impacting that. If you were to really make me pick a side, I would say it's not the thing. It's just that they're asking or guys are training in a manner to try and throw as hard as they possibly can and you're seeing the results. Excellent job, Boog. Dodgers, Padres, Sunday Night Baseball. Boog Shambi, Doug Glanville have your call right here on ESPN Radio. All right, we'll let you go here, Boog, and I'm looking forward to you cranking up that organ with a little bit of Pearl Jam here going into the game tonight, all right? <laughs> Um, I'm gonna get it going. Don't worry, you guys. I mean, it's gonna. I'm gonna take the, the house down. There's a yeah. You're gonna love it. Excellent job, Boog. See you, man. Thank you. Bye, you guys. There you go, Boog Shabby, Doug Glanville tonight with your call. Sunday night baseball. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Protect your home and auto. Save when you bundle. Get a quote at progressive.com. All right, coming up here on prime time, we've done a ton of NBA today. The Eastern Conference matchups are all set. The Western Conference matchups are all set. We'll get you one final look before we go into a little bit of a day off tomorrow in the association, and then you got all the playing action beginning on Tuesday night. That's next. This is prime time on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Sunday night baseball on ESPN Radio. The ball drilled to left off the bat of Machado. It's going. It's way back. Manny Machado and the San Diego Padres face Mookie Best Shohei Otani and the L.A. Dodgers. Coverage of Sunday night baseball begins at 6 Eastern with first pitch at 7 Eastern on ESPN Radio and on ESPN. The 2024 NBA Play-In Tournament. It's one of the homes with the plan is all about. Cuts on the baseline, two to shoot. A 35-foot line to go to Amazing. Whoa. Amazing. You got to win to get in. Let's get it. Open left side three. It is good. The NBA Play-In Tournament. It's got a Game 7 feel. Next week on ESPN Radio and on ESPN. Monday, Carlin versus Joe. We're reacting to the final two days of the NBA regular season. Plus, don't look now, but the NFL draft is less than two weeks away. It's Monday, Carlin versus Joe. Noon Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. This is Freddie and Harry on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Don Staley said, we got a great product. You guys keep disrespecting our product. We have star power, but you guys don't give it the credit that you should. And yeah, she was calling the media, but she was name-checking so many different people back then. Now nobody has an excuse. And that was Don Staley's way of saying, yeah, we're a part of this, but we kept telling you. Check out more from Freddie and Harry weekdays at 3 Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. It's Evan Cohen coming up Monday. We'll react to the Masters and get you ready for the NBA play-in tournament. It's unsportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Amber and Ian, the great Nancy Lieberman returns here to ESPN Radio. I just look at where the game is today, and I marvel at it, and I fangirl at it, <laughs> and I'm so proud of all these young athletes who are crushing it. 18.7. Everybody needs to write that number down when you play the lottery this week. Amber and Ian, weeknights at 7 Eastern on ESPN Radio and on Sirius XM Channel 80. The 2024 NFL Draft heads to Detroit, and it's time to see who gets the job. Caleb is a unique and special talent thrown in football. And what sets them apart. The Heisman Trophy winner is Jaden Daniels. All of the greats were high here. <laughs> See who gets the job. The 2024 NFL Draft begins Thursday, April 25th on ESPN, ABC, and NFL Network. Hey, I'm Greg McElroy, former Alabama quarterback and host of Always College Football from Omaha Productions. Five days a week, I'll be taking 
deep dive into the world of college football with some of the biggest names on and off the field. And off seasons here are a thing of the past. Always college football goes year-round with analysis, opinions, and insight from the top teams from coast to coast. Always college football with Greg McElroy. Available where you get your podcast. Hello, Albuquerque. This is Brian Elacher. You listen to ESPN Radio 1017 for Team. The 2024 NBA Play In Tournament. This one will go home. This what the Play In is all about. You got to win to get in. Let's get it. The NBA Play-In Tournament. It's got a Game 7 feel. This week on ESPN Radio and on ESPN. Oh, what a song. Excellent job there. A little Pearl Jam to take us home. You're digging it, Dre. Look at you. You're bobbing your head. You're, Andre Snellix is into it. You're into a little bit of Pearl Jam. I see you. <laughs> Just pretend it was on the organ. You know, that's your request that's from right. last segment. That's right. There you go. This is Primetime on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, and Sirius XM Channel 80. And we are presented by Progressive Insurance. All right. I do, I do want to say, I, I want to I vis- revisit this real quick, all right? Scotty Scheffler is minus 11. He's four strokes up, all right? He's through 17. Dre, we all know the scenario. We talked about it a couple of hours ago. The wife, if she were to go into labor, first child, if she were to go into labor, it would, it would be early. It, it wasn't expected to be this weekend, all right? It would have to have been early. She was going to call him, and he agreed. He, he's out. Dre, at this point, he's through he's 17. Finishing. He's four strokes up. He's, he's about to win the Masters. Like, if she were to go into labor, she can't call him, right? Yeah, no, he, I mean, he's finishing. I mean, she could call him and he'll say, like, hey, baby, I'll be there soon. You're on hole 17, right? You know, most times labor can it, it can take a little while. Like, it's not something that... It's not know, like the movies. I'm it's just not saying. like that. You know, yeah, now, I am a married man. I've got three wonderful children and a beautiful wife. And, you know... Nothing should be prioritized over childbirth and and all of those things. But as you laid out, this is a decision with millions of dollars worth of ramifications. It's the peak of his career accomplishments that can be done. And you're on the 17th hole, which means that you're really on what's 18 times four. Okay, uh, on, on the 71st out of 72 holes, mm-hmm. you're finishing at this point. But the time it would take you to get dressed and get over there isn't going to be materially different. To finish that last hole, and conversely, uh, you know he's going to finish. He's he's a, he's about to tee off on eighteen. He's got to be thinking right now. Wow, because he's four strokes up. Like he can afford to be. Let's just be like super careful on this mm-hmm. final. Super super careful. All right, and and he's got to be thinking right now. Wow, this is, this is going to be some couple of weeks here. We're going to have our first child, and I'm going to have just won the Masters. Yep. Like how do you how do you keep that? Like and now again, he's not a one stroke. He's a Four strokes, all right? So he, he can really be super conservative here. But, man, how is that not going through your mind right now? Yeah, but, you know, like you said, being up four strokes is different than being up one, right? You know, like you, you feel like at this point, I just have to do the process, right? I just have to to not nut up, and, and I'm going to win this. And so, you pitch at you Texas know, A&M, ultimately get drafted by the L.A. Dodgers. Ironically, you make your major league debut against them. Then you go to Seattle for a few years. You get selected in the Rule 5 draft this past year by the Padres. How would you sum up the journey to this point? A lot of learning experiences. Uh, There's there's a lot of struggle along the ways, uh, a lot of overcoming obstacles sort of thing. Um, Thankfully, none of those have been injuries, but, uh, you know, coming out of college, I was, I guess, pretty average uh, stuff-wise. Didn't throw the hardest, didn't have the best off speed and everything and then uh you know learn to pitch a little bit with the dodgers just how to how to use them arsenal and then uh stuff still wasn't good so i ended up getting traded to the mariners where i learned you know how to develop myself and and for a while it was just to focus on uh let's let's make our stuff like my you know velocity big league level my breaking balls big league level and stuff and then once i got that then it was now let's learn like you know go back to pitching and and uh, I think all those years of just learning and, and the growth of, of just being around the game long enough uh, has kind of 
just brought me to this moment. So uh, I feel very prepared and, and ready to go. You talk about getting better, your stuff getting better over the years. Who helped you in particular, whether it be at the, the Mariners organization or somewhere else? Yeah, I mean, the, my time with the Mariners was greatly beneficial to me. Um, they, you know, provided a system that kind of just highlighted, like, where exactly could I get the most growth out of and uh, just also supported with a bunch of good coaches and teammates there in that organization. I, I wouldn't be able to name just one guy in particular, but uh, just, you know, the culmination of a lot of guys, a lot of hard work, and, and you know, myself included, where uh, I spent many off-seasons just – in my, with myself and uh, just kind of coaching and training on my own and and uh, just using what I've learned around when I was with you know all the teammates and coaches and stuff and just applying it to be better. Hearing your thoughts about the Mariners organization, now I'm interested to hear about your reaction when you find out this past December you're, you're getting selected by the Padres, you're joining your third organization. What was your initial reaction? Uh, I was I was super excited. Uh, because I mean, obviously, with uh, with the being in AAA and and getting Rule Five, it meant that I was going to get a big league opportunity. And uh, even though I pitched really, really well at the back half of last year and pitched well in the Dominican Republic this off season, uh, you know, I never really felt like I was truly considered to actually get called up at the Mariners. So uh, I was felt like I was right on the verge, but they never actually pulled the trigger on it. But you know, then again, they had a, a really good bullpen there in Seattle, so it's a tough, tough one to get into. But uh, to be selected in the Rule 5 and to have a, an opportunity here in the big leagues with the Padres has been, you know, just a dream come true. And then since that moment in the Rule 5 draft, there's been a lot going on in your life. You end up joining a new organization, going to spring training. Even before that, you end up getting married. Then you have the pitcher's camp here in San Diego before spring training began. Let's start with, with the wedding. How was the wedding? <laughs> the wedding was task and everything. We also uh, bought a house together, so there was a whole process of moving into there, and uh, we got another puppy, or got a new puppy, so we hit the trifecta this offseason and just had a very busy offseason, and uh, and then, yeah, with the new team and everything, um, you know, I haven't had many down days. <laughs> What's the puppy's name? Uh, his name's actually Rooster. Rooster? Where'd that come from? So, uh... My dad, uh, who passed away about five years ago from cancer, uh, one of my childhood nicknames uh, that he would call me occasionally was Rooster Cogburn uh, from old John Wayne Western. And uh, so I just kind of felt like it was fitting to have a, you know, one of my childhood nicknames to my dad's. You know, there you, so that, that's where it came from. That's wonderful, Stephen. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, back to baseball before I let you go. Obviously, you show up to spring training, an opportunity to make this team. But I, I think it's important to note that you had to compete for a spot in this bullpen. And there were a lot of names competing for spots. What was your mindset entering spring training? What do you feel like you did well? Well, uh, I mean, I know it was a very tough competition but uh my mind was more so on just staying present in the moments and not letting you know everything that could go wrong or you know if so and so pitching well or you know what's my competition doing i mean none of that to me mattered it was more about what can i do today to prepare and and be the best that i can be every time i touch the mountain that was Stephen Kolick, my conversation with him from last week at Petco Park. Hope you enjoyed getting to know the new Padres reliever a little bit better. And a big thank you to Stephen Kolick for talking to me last week inside the dugout at Petco Park. Again, we are in a rain delay before first pitch here at Dodger Stadium in L.A. Tarp is on the field. The rain is still coming down as we continue on our Eco Water SoCal Padres pregame show. A little extended edition of our pregame coverage before we get into rain delay programming. Now let's give you our keys to the game for this series finale. How will the Padres unlock a victory in today's game? These are the keys to the game. Presented by Honor Buick GMC Hummer in National City. Our keys to the game against the L.A. Dodgers. For the Padres, key number one, the magic number is three. How about this? Padres are 8-2 this season when they score three or more runs. They're 0-7 when they don't reach three runs scored. So keep an eye on that number, three. If they get there, three runs, that's usually meaning a good thing for the Padres. Key number two, hit the big maple, James Paxton 
on the mound today for the Dodgers after signing a one-year, $7 million contract in the offseason with L.A. And yes, his nickname is the Big Maple. Paxton faced the Padres once last year as a member of the Red Sox. He went six innings, gave up just one run. Xander Bogarts has good career numbers against them. Three home runs against Paxton in 26 at-bats. An interesting note, just about lefties against the Padres offense so far this year. Padres are hitting 220 against left-handed pitching this season. Compare it to a 264 batting average against uh, righties so far this year, albeit a lot more at bats against righties so far. I bring it up because in 2023, the Padres were actually way better against left-handed pitching. They had a 271 team batting average against lefties, only 233 against righties. So again, this year, it's 220 against lefties, 264 against righties. It sort of flips. So I'm interested to see what eventually happens with the Padres and left-handed pitching. We'll see. Key number three, a dealing Darvish. Hugh Darvish making his 14th career regular season start against his former team. Darvish has traditionally been good against the Dodgers, a 2-2-7 ERA in those 14 starts. A couple of matchups to watch today. Mookie Betts hitting only 175 in 34 career at-bats against Darvish. Freddie Freeman has a 625 slugging percentage all-time against Darvish, including in the postseason. And key number four, stopping Mookie. Mookie Betts, once again, off to a really good start here in 2024. He's hitting 364 with a major league leading 1,200 OPS. He leads the major leagues in runs scored, hits, walks, and home runs. Betts went three for five last night, had a big impact on the game last night, had a big impact on the game on Friday night, stopping Mookie at the top of the lineup, limiting him at the very least. That's a big key in today's game for you, Darvish, and the Padres. And that's a look at our keys to the game. When we come back, we'll take a deeper look at the Padres' defense so far this season. Plus, we'll take a much deeper dive into our starting pitching matchup between Hugh Darvish and James Paxton. Again, we are in a rain delay before first pitch when we have an official update on when today's game will begin. We'll let you know the tarp is on the field here at Dodger Stadium. And for now, we are getting you ready for today's game. Then a little rain delay programming. You're listening to the Padres Radio Network. If your lawn looks more like a desert than an oasis, then you know that lawn care isn't easy. If it were, everyone would do it, as well as True Green does it. In just three easy steps, True Green's online tools help customize a treatment plan for you. And it's all backed by the True Green Guarantee. Go to TrueGreen.com today to start your three easy steps and save 50% off your first application. It's time to trust your experts at True Green. Live life outside. If you're looking for the most epic place on earth, then climb to the peak of a snowy mountaintop. Then once you get there, keep going. Because with intelligent 4x4 and 7 drive modes and a Nissan Pathfinder, the search is the real adventure. Available feature. Intelligent 4x4 cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Shop our best savings for spring during Spring Fest at Lowe's. Right now, get a free leaf blower and select combo kits. And stock up on soil for all your gardening projects. Get three bags of three-quarter cubic foot miracle Grow garden soil free when you buy three. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Offers valid through 417. Compared to trimmer purchased separately. Blower and trimmer sold packaged together as combo kit. Includes one battery and charger. miracle Grow offer excludes Alaska and Hawaii. While supplies last. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If you've got questions, O'Reilly Auto Parts has answers. Need a pro you can trust? We've got that too. No matter what you need, our professional parts people have the training and expertise to help you do things right. Deep automotive knowledge, just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. And now, two pigeons bemoaning the fact you can stream DirecTV satellite-free. Hey, Frank, a little birdie told me you'd... 
don't need a satellite dish to get direct TV. What's little birdie? Was it Jimmy the Sparrow? It's a figure of speech. Point is, you can stream direct TV over the internet now. Oh, sure. Next you're going to tell me those big birds are made of metal and filled with people, right? <laughs> you mean airplanes? Stream direct TV without a satellite dish. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Terms or restrictions apply. Free! Who doesn't love free? With Milo's Rewards, you get the member-only treatment that's actually worth it. Enjoy free member gifts you'll love. And once you reach Silver Key status, you can get free standard shipping. Because Lowe's knows nothing feels better than free. Learn more about our new loyalty program at Lowe's.com slash Milo's Rewards today. The program subject to terms and conditions. See Lowe's.com slash terms for details. Member gifts may be subject to additional terms and restrictions. See Lowe's.com slash shipping terms for details. Subject to change. WFN and KWFN HD1 San Diego. Hi, this is Luis Camposano. The Padres play here on San Diego's number one station, 97.3 The Fan. Always live on the Free Odyssey app. Rico Water SoCal Padres pregame show continues on the Padres radio network. Sam Levitt with you from Dodger Stadium in LA where we have a rain delay before first pitch. The tarp is on the field here in LA. The rain continues to fall lightly now. No activity as far as the grounds crew looking like they're getting this tarp off the field. The tarp has a lot of water sitting on it. So we're waiting for the official update as far as uh, when first pitch will be in today's series finale. Rubber match of this three-game set between the Padres and the Dodgers. But until we have first pitch, we'll continue on. A little bit of an extended EcoWater SoCal Padres pregame show. And then we'll go into some rain delay programming as we uh, lead you up towards first pitch here on the Padres radio. Network, And as you probably can imagine, rain delays, we know they're really, really rare at Petco Park. They're also really, really rare here at Dodger Stadium, but not as of late. How about this? This is from Kevin A.C. Uh, from the San Diego Union Tribune who tweeted this out 10 minutes ago. Kevin tweeting, there was a rain delay at Dodger Stadium in 2015. Casino Dodgers on deck on the official home of L.A. Dodgers baseball. It's the Dodgers and Padres Sunday night baseball. First pitch a little later than scheduled. It was supposed to be at 410. James Paxton and you Darvish on the mound. But because of the rain in the area in our Burbank studios looking outside right now, a light rain coming down as it moves from west to east and still some rain at Dodger Stadium in the next 30 minutes before they get the field ready, get the tarp off the field. And we are scheduled for a 445 first pitch. So only about a 35 minute rain delay expected at Dodger Stadium at this point. Again, James Paxton looking to get to 3-0 and to start the season. Former Dodger Yu Darvish will get the start for the San Diego Padres. As far as the Dodgers lineup is concerned today, who's starting? Time for the starting lineups. Mookie Betts leading off and playing shortstop Shohei Otani batting second as your designated hitter. Freddie Freeman batting third at first base. Will Smith doing the catching on this Sunday batting clean up. Max Muncy is at third base, batting fifth. Teoscar Hernandez is in right field, batting sixth. James Altman gets the start in center field, batting seventh. Kike Hernandez for the second straight game, batting eighth and playing left field. Chris Taylor got the start on Friday night. Now back-to-back -back starts for Kike in left field, batting eighth. And Gavin Lux will get the start at second base tonight and batting ninth with James Paxton, the left-hander on the mound for your Dodgers, who will continue their homestand after today, they will welcome in the Washington Nationals for three games. And then the New York Mets, a nine-game homestand for this Dodgers team, a day off on Thursday. But looking to get the series win with this game against the Padres coming up. Make sure you're listening in the sixth inning when Andre Ethier gives you the superior grocer's word of the game. Listen for Andre in the sixth inning. He'll tell you the word. Remember it. Write it down. Put it in your phone, however you need to do it. Then tomorrow on the Petros and Money Show on AM570 LA Sports, be listening for the cue to call. And when you hear it, tell him the word. And you're going to win $100 gift card to Superior Grocers. Again, it's in the sixth inning. Listen for Andre Ethier. All right, when we come back, we'll head back out to the stadium. Here from Steven Nelson and Rick Monday. Then get you ready for rain delay Dodger talk. Yes, second day in a row at Dodger Stadium. 
that the Dodgers and Padres will start in a rain delay. It's the fourth time this season already that the Dodgers will experience a rain delay, either during the game or before first pitch. We'll head back out to the ravine when we come back. I'm Tim Case. has been Morongo Casino. Dodgers on deck on the Los Angeles Dodgers Audio Network. Streaming LA Dodgers baseball. Now the 3 2. Her ball swung on and missed strike three. Line drive one. Oh, what a stab by Freddie Freeman at first. Deep to right center. Back it goes. It is off the top of the wall. Here comes Taylor around third. The Dodgers win it. Line drive right field. The Dodgers walk it off. The Dodgers win it. The birthright of a legend. This has been Morongo Casino Dodgers on Deck. Morongo Casino Resort and Spa, the MVP for fun, food, and good times. Budweiser. This Bud's for you. First Five California. Helping kids reach their full potential. Security benefit. To and through retirement. And L.A. Care. For all of L.A. I can't lose. I'm a believer. I'm going to change the world. And give them hell till they believe us. There is not stopping. There is no rebuilding. Every year, it's a relentless pursuit of a title. First pitch is moments away on the home of the blue. We're going to change the world. The L.A. Dodgers Audio Network. This is L.A. Dodgers Baseball. KLAC Los Angeles, KYSR, HD2 Los Angeles, and iHeartRadio Station. Stream L.A. Dodgers Baseball. It's the main event. The Dodgers have officially become the new evil empire. Otani, you have Mookie Betts, you have Freddie Freeman. This can't be happening. It is. L.A. is rejoicing right now. Holy crap, as they say. Here we go. It's the main event. Holy crap. It's about time. Let them know. This is L.A. Dodgers Baseball. This is the main event in Los Angeles sport. L.A. Dodgers Baseball is brought to you by Ford. Built Ford Tough. L.A. County Public Works. Recycling beverage containers is a triple play. Jacoby and Myers. Justice for you since 1972. Coffee hot dogs. A SoCal treasure. Local, original, great. Navi and Tankless Water Heaters. For endless hot water, visit tanklessmadesimple.com. And by Galpin Motors. Here we go, it's so time. Medi-Cal renewals are happening now. All members' eligibility is reviewed once annually, and everyone's renewal date is different. You can check your renewal month in your online benefitscal.com account. If your current address, email, or phone number have changed, please update your information with your local county office. If you get a renewal form in the mail in a yellow envelope, you must complete it to keep your Medi-Cal. If you don't, you will lose your coverage. Visit lacare.org for more information. That's lacare.org. Your car is one of your most prized possessions, so you want to make sure you're taking care of it. And that includes routine oil changes. Hi, this is Tim Case. With our family cars, I trust the folks at Valvoline Instant Oil Change. Home of the 15-minute drive through oil change. No waiting rooms, no appointment needed. With locations all over Southern California, go to SoCalOilChange.com and find the Valvoline Instant Oil Change near you. When you pull in, they offer stay-in-your-car service while you wait. Got 15 minutes? Need an oil change? Make it a Valvoline instant oil change. Let's talk about Galpin Ford. Mike Schwartz and Paul Ulbrich. What a dynamic duo they got going right now. Galpin Ford has got one of the largest inventories of Fords anywhere on earth. The F-150. Are you looking for hybrids? Are you looking for electric vehicles? The new Mustangs. They got them ready for immediate delivery. And you don't even have to go in. Now, if you want to, right off the 405 at Roscoe, ask for Mike Schwartz. Ask for Paul Ulbrich. You want to do everything online? Hit up GalpinFord.com. 800 go galpin or hop off the 405 and ask for Mike Schwartz. Sometimes in life, like in baseball, you need a spark off the bench or a late inning rally to help you win the day. Ito wins Oi Ocha Unsweetened Green Tea. All natural ingredients, no sugars, no sweeteners, and only five calories. Brewed from premium whole tea leaves sourced straight from Japan. Ito in Oi Ocha Unsweetened Green Tea. It's the perfect source of caffeine to get you through the day and get the...
$149 value now included with Spectrum. the trade that came to San Diego this past offseason. What is the process of the organization after spending so long in New York? It's been really good. Uh, I think the transition has been pretty seamless. and yeah. The guys are great. Staff's great. Uh, front office has been great to me so far. and uh, So I'm really looking forward to the season. You're a real veteran presence on this team. What do you view as your role on this team in particular in 2024? Um, I mean, you know, when Whenever I'm out there, I, I think, um, you know, watch him in the clubhouse on the field he, he seems like he belongs right where he is here at spring training what have your early impressions been of Ethan Salas really good really good um, I would have never guessed he was 17 wow. based on his maturity level I mean when I was 17 I definitely wasn't that mature so <laughs> um, yeah he, I, I think he's got a he's, he's got a pretty special skill set and, and so you know down the road he's going to be pretty pretty darn good player a couple of non-baseball things for you i know you play the guitar and uh it kind of famously almost at this point play the guitar so <laughs> take me through the process of learning how to play guitar and, and what are your skills like right now uh i started learning when i was <laughs> probably my first year in pro ball okay and uh i bought like a 50 dollars acoustic guitar from a pawn shop in tampa and then just carried it with me all season and um and then I switched to electric after that because I'm I'm more of a rock guy. Okay. You know? um, but then I so I, I learned myself for a few years and then I took some lessons from um, this guy named Dave Nassi. He was uh, he's the lead guitarist for Kip Moore right now. Okay. So, um, but he was he was in Huntington Beach, local. So um, took lessons from him for a couple of years and that really kind of helped take me to the next level, which is still isn't good, but it's like. <laughs> It's kind of where I wanted to be, um, so yeah. But it's good enough where you have played for guys in the clubhouse before, so you must be must be pretty good. I mean, uh, <laughs> if I play something, you know, usually it's recognizable. Okay. <laughs> Hell's Bells, that's one of your songs, right? Yeah, yeah. Somebody here, a closer, Hall of Famer Trevor yeah. Hoffman, that was his <laughs> song. Have, you haven't played it for him yet, have you? No, Okay. no. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to practice it before... Uh, before that happens okay i don't want to disrespect it oh that, that's <laughs> fair on the to-do list another non-baseball thing i read that you do surf or at least you, you surfed growing up what is your surfing experience like because san diego california pretty good place to surf yeah um i actually started surfing after i started playing pro ball as okay. well um so that was that was fun i mean me and my buddies 
I had a couple other buddies in pro ball at the time that were we were training with, and we used to surf like pretty much every single day. There was a rideable wave. Wow. Um, so it was it was actually really good, really good cardio and um, good for the shoulders. But it, I mean, again, I'm not I'm not good at surfing. It's just. <laughs> It was really fun. Okay, so he's humble when it comes to surfing and the guitar. Don't be humble about baseball. I mean, this is a this is a pretty exclusive club, Major League Baseball players. It is interesting, though, as you're talking to me about surfing and guitar playing, these are things you picked up after you started playing pro ball. So what got you interested in, in maybe picking up hobbies that weren't baseball? Um, I think they were just stuff that I was interested in going through school like as a kid but never had time to do it because school and baseball is a is a big undertaking um you know parents made sure i got good grades so i was always kind of grinding burning both ends of the candle every night right. uh, you know with homework and baseball and so never really had time for hobbies so once i got into pro ball it was like i only have to focus on baseball now there you so go. uh we got plenty of time for for new hobbies let's finish up with something baseball related because as a, a veteran catcher I, I can't even imagine how many guys you've caught a baseball from from the mound uh, who and maybe let's go outside a musgrove a darvish a king who out of guys you've caught this spring has really impressed you maybe uh, names that padres fans wouldn't even be as familiar with um there's a young kid iriarte yeah. i was really impressed with and um you know, I, I think everybody's been really impressed with uh, Brito and Vasquez yeah. as well. Um, I mean, I have a history with them, but right, right. Um, you know, I last time I caught Waldron in the game, he was really good, okay. and um, so I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot of good arms here, and, and I'm pretty confident going into this season. You mentioned Waldron. How much experience do you have catching the knuckleball? Not much, but luckily last game I didn't miss any, so okay. it was, it was All good. Right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, Kyle, great having you here. It's been a lot of fun uh, meeting you and Michael King and Randy and Johnny and all these former Yankees. A lot of former Yankees now yeah. uh, here in San Diego. Best of luck with everything this season, and I'm sure I'll talk to you as uh, the season goes along. All right. Thanks, Sam. That was my conversation with Kyle Higashioka during spring training. Hope you enjoyed it. Thought, thought that was uh, an interesting conversation with Kyle back at spring training. Uh, interesting to hear him say Jairo Ariarte's name. I had forgot that question and that answer. And, of course, that was before our Ariarte was part of the Dylan Cease trade. So a little did we know that Ariarte would no longer be with the Padres organization just a handful of weeks later. Again, Sam Levitt with you here in L.A. at Dodger Stadium. Fans follow filing in. Tarp is off the field and we do have an official start time for you. First pitch today at 4.45 p.m. So 4.45, the official start time here today on the Padres Radio Network. So here's the schedule. I will stay with you for the next six, seven minutes. Then at 4.35, we'll hear for the first time today from Jesse Agler and Tony Gwynn Jr. They'll have the starting lineups. First pitch in all the play-by-play. -play. So, again, 4.35, Jesse and Tony, first pitch at 4.45, and uh, now we have an official first pitch time. So, uh, good news, we'll have less than an hour rain delay before first pitch. So, a nice job by the grounds crew right now, getting the field ready, and uh, we'll step aside here quickly, come back with some notes before today's game, and then get you to Jesse and Tony. This is the Padres Radio Network. Introducing Lineage Watch Company, San Diego's very own watch company. Proudly family-owned and operated, Lineage watches are more than just timepieces. They're a celebration of American craftsmanship. Lineage watches are designed, engineered, and purpose-built in the USA. Lineage watches are uniquely powered by American movements. Define your legacy today with a Lineage timepiece at lineagewatchco.com. That's lineagewatchco.com. Lineage Watch Company, official timepiece of the San Diego Padres Radio Network. Craving a taste of Baja without leaving town? Look no further than Rockin' Baja and Baja Rick's Cantina. Immerse yourself in the flavors of the Baja Coast right here in San Diego. From sizzling fajitas, mouth-watering lobster, and chilled margaritas, our menu is a fiesta for your taste buds. With our lively, festive atmosphere, every meal feels like a beachside celebration. Join us at Rockin' Baja and Baja Rick's Cantina 
for a dining experience unlike any other. See us before or after the game in Old Town or the Gas Lamp or at rockinbaja.com. This is Dan Fulkerson with Bada Fulkerson Law Group, San Diego's favorite personal injury law firm. If you ever know anyone that suffers injuries from a car accident, motorcycle accident, or semi-truck accident, our firm is always here to help. It's easy to find an attorney, but it's not easy to find a law firm that truly cares. Our reputation speaks for itself. Give us a call today, 619-333-5555, and we'll show you why we're different. Bada Fulkerson Law Group. Hi, this is Luis Camposano. You're listening to Padres Baseball on the Padres Radio Network. We are live here at Dodger Stadium in L.A. We do have a weather delay before first pitch, but again, tarp is off the field. Grounds crew here at Dodger Stadium getting the field ready. And first pitch now is scheduled for 4.45 p.m. So we'll have baseball, the final and rubber game of this three-game series at 4.45. And we'll go up to Jesse and Tony here in L.A. at 4.35. Uh, I'll give you a little uh, scene set here. Give you a little, I know I gave the tarp play-by-play and based on social Social media apparently the tarp play-by-play is quite popular so it's one of those things we hope we don't have to do it often because we don't want rain we don't want the tarp to come out but i don't know i might have something with the uh, tarp play-by-play maybe that's my new career just go to different stadiums in america and when they put the tarp on or have a live feed somewhere of uh, every stadium and when they put the tarp on I tell you what's going on. Maybe something like that. But I do have the binoculars out. So I'll tell you what's going on on the field right now. We have some Dodgers warming up in left field. We've got James Outman in shallow left field doing some stretching. We've got, uh, who is that in deeper left center field? That's Gavin Lux uh, doing some throwing. So Outman and Lux in left. In right field, we've got Xander Bogarts doing some throwing. We had Jackson Merrill doing some stretching just moments ago. Now Merrill walking back towards uh, the dugout. Fernando Tatis Jr. is out there. He's getting his arm loose. Now having a catch. So, uh, Fernando, I'm trying to see his shoes. Can I see Fernando's shoes from here with my binoculars? Not really. I'm not totally sure which uh, cleats he's wearing today. But he is uh, throwing out there in right field. By the way, should mention, Padres are wearing uh, their brown tops today with gold uh, San Diego on the front and the gold numbers. Dodgers are in their home white uniforms. So the Padres in those uh, brown tops today. Ha Sung Kim has taken the field. He's now doing some stretching. He bends down towards his toes and now he's uh sort of uh twisting and turning he takes a step with his left foot he twists and turns his uh, torso now the other foot twists and turns so uh <laughs> is that real <laughs> frank back in the studio are you telling me this isn't captivating come on all right it's enough uh, rain delay and stretching play by play Everybody, I'm trying to fill time here, all right? We've had three hours of rain delays the last couple of days. It's called filling time. We'll have baseball for you here in just a little bit. All right, let's set the table one more time before today's game. Padres come in with a record of 8-9. and nine. Dodgers come in a record of 11-6. and six. But the Dodgers are just 4-4 four and four in their last eight games. How about this? The last time the Padres won consecutive series in L.A., It was their final series in L.A. in 2012 and their first series at Dodger Stadium in 2013. So the Padres are trying to do that here today for the first time since the 2012 and 2013 seasons. Remember, the Padres won their final series of 2023 here in L.A. And if they win the rubber match here today of this series, that will be two consecutive series wins since the Padres did it at the end of 2012 and the first series in 2013. So that's what the Padres are trying to do today. And of course, the Padres are also trying to move back even to a record of 9-9 nine and nine if they can get a win. Again, our starting pitching matchup here today, you Darvish on the mound for the Padres, James Paxton on the mound for the Dodgers. Darvish 0-1, a 3-8-6 ERA in four starts so far this year. Coming off a tough outing earlier this week against the Cubs, three innings, four earned runs given up. And meanwhile, Paxton 2-0, a 1-6-4 ERA in two starts to begin the year. He's coming off six innings, two earned runs given up, three hits allowed in Minnesota earlier this week. 
That'll do it for our pregame coverage. When we come back, Jesse Agler, Tony Gwynn Jr. have the full starting lineups, first pitch, and then all the play-by-play. -play. I'll talk to you on our postgame show. You're listening to your home for San Diego Padres Baseball, 97.3 The Fan, and the Padres Radio Network. Enjoy the game, everybody. Shop our best savings for spring during Spring Fest at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off. Plus, save an extra $150 on every $1,500 you spend on select major appliances. And save on premium two cubic foot mulch. Get five bags for just $10. Because Lowe's knows spring. Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid to 417. Appliance savings vary based on purchase amount. Exclusions apply. See Lowe's.com for more details. Premium mulch offer excludes Alaska and Hawaii. Selection varies by location. While supplies last. If you're looking for the most epic place on Earth, let's start at the base of a massive waterfall. Then trek through the thick jungle. Then climb to the peak of a snowy mountaintop. Then once you get there, keep going. Because with intelligent 4x4 and 7 drive modes and a Nissan Pathfinder, the search is the real adventure. Available feature. Intelligent 4x4 cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Protect your vehicle's engine with Syntec and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Syntec Premium Full Synthetic Motor Oil is formulated for today's engines to dissipate heat and friction and reduce wear. Get five quarts of Syntec Full Synthetic and a MicroGuard Select filter for just $33.99. Limit supplies, see store for details. Get Syntec only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Free. Who doesn't love free? With Milo's Rewards, you get the member-only treatment that's actually worth it. Enjoy free member gifts you'll love. And once you reach Silver Key status, you can get free standard shipping. Because Lowe's knows nothing feels better than free. Learn more about our new loyalty program at Lowe's.com slash Milo's Rewards today. Program subject to terms and conditions. See Lowe's.com slash terms for details. Member gifts may be subject to additional terms and restrictions. See Lowe's.com slash shipping terms for details. Subject to change. Padres baseball is on the air on the Padres radio network. Diving stop, long through the first, and he got him! Padres baseball is proudly presented by Eco Water SoCal, Valley View Casino and Hotel, LeftiesRooter.com, Genesis Home Improvements, Bill Howe Plumbing, Heating, and Air, Honor Buick GMC Hummer in National City, OverAskSD.com, Lineage Watch Company, Fraser Farms Market, Baja Rick's Cantina, Bada Fulkerson Law Group, Sin Lee Food, your San Diego County Toyota dealers, Kaiser Permanente, Palomar Health, Hamul Casino, Jensen Neat, El Cajon Ford, Soapy Joe's Car Wash, Timber Tech, Grand Jetto's Farm and Garden Supply, Dixie Line Lumber and Home Centers, Sid's Carpet Bar, Ken Grody Ford, North County Transit District, and by the Grilling Store at Hillcrest Ace Hardware. Now, let's take you up in the Padres broadcast booth. Fernando at the wall. Oh! Looks up. Oh, he made the catch. Here's Jesse Agler and Tony Gwynn Jr. Down Los Angeles in the final game of this three-game series between the Padres and the L.A. Dodgers. It is a rubber match. Friday night, the Padres, a wild come-from-behind win in 11 innings as they beat the Dodgers 8-7. to Yesterday, L.A. answered with a 5-2 win after a two-plus hour rain delay at the start. Here tonight, you Darvish on the mound, again against one of his old teams, while the Dodgers will counter with the longtime Mariner, veteran left-hander James Paxton. Hi again, everybody, alongside Tony Gwynn Jr. and our producer-engineer Dave Marcus. I'm Jesse Agler. So very glad to have you with us. Rain is, once again, a part of the storyline here late this afternoon. But the Padres have played a couple of very tough games against the Dodgers to open up this series. And uh, dare I say, it feels a little bit different between these two teams so far this year. Uh, I, I think the thing that stands out immediately is how competitive these games have been uh, going down to the very last out. And, and so... 
that in itself is different than what we've experienced over the last couple of seasons. The Padres have certainly put the pressure on the Dodgers in this series so far. They've been able to split these first two games. A chance to, to win a series against a very, very good ball club. Split the first two of this series, obviously split the first two in Seoul, and so the season series stands at 2-2. Two and two. The Dodgers have outscored the Padres in the four games. 28 to 27. That's how close it has been so far this year. Darvish, tough one against the Cubs. Uh, his last time out, really all the trouble came with two outs, nobody on in the one inning. Feels to me maybe like he's still trying to find his way at the start of this. I, I think it feels exactly the same way to me. We, we watched you, Darvish, look really sharp in the previous start before the last one, and then he looked sharp to start that game, and then all of a sudden he just couldn't he didn't have the feel or the release point of that breaking ball, and that ended up costing him in a big way in that last start. I fully expect you, Darvish, to get back on to the, the same path he was on leading into the last. Psalm command and a little bit of everything. Uh, he's been he's been decent this year, but I think he's still got a couple no more notches he can go up. Yeah, for sure. James Paxton on the mound, veteran left-hander for the Dodgers, a guy they signed to a one-year deal uh, before this season with all the injuries they've got in the rotation. Nice guy to be able to just sort of plug in there. Padres last year smashed left-handed pitching. They just haven't gotten to see much of it so far this season. An opportunity today to see what it's all about. Yeah, certainly with a, a heavy right-handed lineup, uh, this would usually suit the Padres. We'll see how it goes today. As you said, they really haven't faced that many left-handed pitchers uh, to start the season. and It's been mixed results to this point. So uh, they'll have a chance to, as I said, win this series going up against a lefty. This It really it goes to the strength of this ball club in terms of the lineup. Hopefully the Padres get a W today. All right, that is the setup here this afternoon at Dodger Stadium. Rubber game is coming up. Starting lineups with Tony when we return on the Padres Radio Network. Shop our best savings for spring during Spring Fest at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off. Plus save an extra $150 on every $1,500 you spend on select major appliances. And save on premium two cubic foot mulch. Get five bags for just $10. Because Lowe's knows spring. Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid to 417. Appliance savings vary based on purchase amount. Exclusions apply. See Lowe's.com for more details. Premium mulch offer excludes Alaska and Hawaii. Selection varies by location. While supplies last. If you're looking for the most epic place on Earth, let's start at the base of a massive waterfall. Then, trek through the thick jungle. Then climb to the peak of a snowy mountaintop. Then once you get there, keep going. Because with intelligent 4x4 and 7 drive modes and a Nissan Pathfinder, the search is the real adventure. Available feature. Intelligent 4x4 cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Check engine light on. Take the guesswork out of your check engine light with O'Reilly Veriscan. It's free and provides a report with solutions based on over 650 million vehicle scans verified by ASE certified master technicians. And if you need help, we can recommend a shop for you. Ask for O'Reilly Veriscan today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Free. Who doesn't love free? With Milo's Rewards, you get the member-only treatment that's actually worth it. Enjoy free member gifts you'll love. And once you reach Silver Key status, you can get free standard shipping. Because Lowe's knows nothing feels better than free. Learn more about our new loyalty program at Lowe's.com slash Milo's Rewards today. The program subject to terms and conditions. See Lowe's.com slash terms for details. Member gifts may be subject to additional terms and restrictions. See Lowe's.com slash shipping terms for details. Subject to change. This is Fernando Tatis Jr. You're listening to Padres Baseball on Padres Radio Network. Another suboptimal day here in Los Angeles, California, as the Padres look to try to win a consecutive series. This one against the Dodgers. Padres roll into today's ball game with an 8-9 record. 
Today's Padre starting lineup is brought to you by Palomar Health. Recognized as the world's best hospital six years in a row and is stepping up to the plate to provide you with the best care. Visit palomarhealth.org to find a doctor. As I said, Padres 8-9 and nine on the season. Xander Bogarts back in the lineup after his off day. He'll play second base. Fernando Tatis Jr. in right field. He'll bat second. Jake Cronenworth will bat third. He'll play first base. Manny Machado is the designated hitter in tonight's action. He'll bat cleanup. Jerickson Profar in left field. He'll bat fifth. Ha Sung Kim at shortstop. He'll bat six. Luis Camposano back in the lineup as well. He'll bat seven. Jackson Merrill in that eighth spot. He'll play center field. And Eggie Rosario at third base. He'll bat ninth. On the mound for the pod. Hugh Darvish 0-1 with a 3-8-6 ERA. Let's step away, take a break. When we come back, we'll have the Dodgers starting lineup as well as first pitch here on the Padres Radio Network. Spin your passion into a business with Shopify and break sales records with the world's best converting checkout. Let's hear that one more time. The world's best converting checkout. Shopify's legendary checkout makes it easier for customers to shop on your website, across social media, and everywhere in between. Now that's music to your ears. Any way you spin it, you can be a smash hit with Shopify. Start your dollar a month trial today at shopify.com slash records. At Odyssey, we help protect this planet we all share through our One Thing Sustainability Initiatives. We donate $1 million of media every year to local environmental nonprofit organizations. And this month, our Odyssey teams will be out in our local communities cleaning up, planting trees, and more. When we each do one thing, it becomes a hundred, a thousand, a million things for our planet. What's your one thing? For more, download the free Odyssey app or go to odyssey.com slash one thing. No one's more locked into the NFL than first and pod. This feeling, and it was referenced on the broadcast, it is Michael Jordan being down double digits again and not panicking, seeing him run onto the field, and it not even being a question, he's calm. Maybe they won't get it done or whatever, but like he's not shook by the moment. There's not it's not even a question. Subscribe to First and Pod on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Add some sizzle to your next special occasion with the Kansas City Steak Company. The most tender, world-class premium steaks delivered right to your door. Get 15% off plus free shipping right now at KansasCitySteaks.com. Use promo code DR15. Listen to every MLB game live. The deep left center field, it is high, it is far, it is gone. Stream minor league affiliates. The Midwest League home run leader. And watch the best baseball highlights. To look ins on MLB Big Inning. MLB at Bat is your all in one live baseball subscription for only $3.99 per month. Deep left field, it's gonna go! Alvarez ties the game! Subscribe to At Bat within the MLB app today. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Hi, uh, this is Matt Walden. You're listening to Padres Baseball on the Padres Radio Network. Today's Dodgers starting lineup is brought to you by Palomar Health, recognized as the world's best hospital six years in a row and is stepping up to the plate to provide you with the best care. Visit palomarhealth.org to find a doctor. Dodgers, 11 and 6. You're tuned to an Odyssey station that is airing a Major League Baseball game. Due to league restrictions, you are not in an area where this game is available. This station will return to regular programming once the game has concluded. And a 3-2 pitch. Popped up. Shallow left center. Popped up. Shallow left center. Altman and Kern. Kike Hernandez is converging, and it's Kike's ball for out number two. Uh, both Hernandez and Altman broke back initially on that ball as soon as he left the bat. First baseman number nine, Jake Cronenworth. There may be just now just a light drizzle. You know, Ten minutes ago, it was coming down pretty hard. 
Things expected to clear within the hour, Mo. You mentioned the lights being on here at Dodger Stadium. Overcast skies, but you can tell the sun is shining bright above them. We can see a break in the clouds. First pitch to Jake Cronenworth is called ball one. So that combines for a ton of fun, let's say, for outfielders to navigate in this one. Baxton steps back and ready for his 1-0 pitch to Cronenworth. And it's actually is... better than a cloudless, bright, sunny afternoon. Mm -hmm. Or with a setting sun when you're looking at it, and especially in right field, you know, historically, the way fields are laid out, right field late can be trouble. Paxton has fallen behind Cronenworth. Three balls, no strikes. The left-handed first baseman for San Diego, one of two lefties in this starting lineup for Mike Schilt. Cronenworth, the first baseman in the three spot, and then Jackson Merrill, the center fielder who led off last night, back to the eighth spot. And Cronenworth taking all the way, strike one from Paxton. Coming into this game, just five total plate appearances against a left-handed batter this year for James Paxton. A foul ball back. It's three and two. Another full count. And you see that a lot, it seems, with James Paxton. One of the higher percentages of full count seen. Base is empty. Scoreless just underway. The top of the first, the 3-2 pitch fouled away by Cronenworth once again. Cronenworth, a really good hitter with two strikes. That's ten hits on two strike counts this year. The 3-2 pitch is upstairs. That's a two-out walk issued by Paxton to Cronenworth. So a base runner on in front of Manny Machado. So you mentioned that Paxton, you know, so far this season, there's only been uh, two other starting pitchers that qualify with a number of innings that have thrown the fastball a higher percentage. Paxton is 69%. And majority of the other pitchers have been curveballs. He's really relying on that special fastball and the knuckle curve. Manny Machado swings at the first pitch, a fly ball at the opposite field. Teoscar Hernandez twirling around on the warning track. He reaches up and makes the grab. So Cronenworth stranded. Machado gave Paxton the scare, but at the end of the top of the first, it's still scoreless. Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, and Freddie Freeman on the way after this. Serving those who serve is a lifelong mission, one that Budweiser supports with Folds of Honor. Together, they've been helping military families for 13 years by funding life-changing scholarships. So join us in raising a Budweiser to raise funds for the families of America. Up and down beginning to 2024. Eight earned runs allowed in total, but seven 
of those came in the last two turns. The delayed leg kick and fires to Mookie Betts. One of his many offerings, a slider breaking away. One ball, no strikes. And sunshine has finally arrived at Dodger Stadium. What is what? What is this sunshine thing you speak of, Rick Monday? Not familiar anymore. The 1-0 to Betts, taken for strike one. The other thing that has arrived is shadows at home plate. Mm. Home plate's in shadow. Third base is in bright sunshine down the left field line, also in some shadow. Darvish with the 1-1 to Mookie Betts, who pulls a fly ball to left field. Tracking it down is Profar. It drops foul. He slid across the line, trying to make a play. Could not. The ball bounced on the wrong side of the line for Mookie, so it'll help. They'll head back to the right-handed batter's box with the count one and yeah. two. Well, Mookie have to wait a little longer because the bat boy very efficiently came out to grab uh, at least the bat to begin with. And home plate umpire Brian Knight was seeing if, if the Dodgers wanted to challenge the call fair or foul down the left field line. The shadows have engulfed both batters' boxes, but you Darvish on the mound in the sun, delivering this 1-2 to Mookie Betts and missing with ball two away on a fastball. About six inches off the plate. Two balls, two strikes. The fastball is a good pitch for Darvish. He's allowed just a 137 average against the fastball over the last two years. Cloud covering the sun, so everyone... Playing without shadows, Mookie Betts swings away at the 2-2, fouls it straight back into the net. Another four-seamer from Darvish. Darvish, in his last turn, gave up four runs in three innings against his other old team, the Chicago Cubs, before a rain delay cut that start short. Still 2-2 to the leadoff batter and Mookie Betts. Right on right, the pitch from Darvish, and Mookie Betts blisters of all the center field. That's a leadoff base hit for Mookie. was on the splitter. Everything that Darvish has done, and again, just to give you a tendency of, of what the Dodgers uh, scatter report may be. He has uh, started off first pitch sliders about 40% of the time over his first uh, four starts this year. After knocking three of the team's five hits last night, Betts picks up another single to get on in front of Shohei Otani, facing his friend and Samurai Japan teammate Yu Darvish. Mookie Betts taking off on the first pitch. Compass on his throw is not going to matter. Mookie Betts has the bag. His third stolen base of the year. And Dodgers, we mentioned this a couple of days ago, whether it's intentional or not, if this really on the, on, on the books, but they have been much more active on the bases. Of course, they also know that Darvish, having been formerly a Dodger, he takes extra time delivering the ball to his catcher from the stretch. Owen won the count on Otani after strike one thrown by Darvish. He checks on Betts and delivers home. Big swing, big miss for Shohei. Nothing in two. These two won the World Baseball Classic last spring for Japan. The nation's third WBC title in five playings of the tournament. Otani has faced Darvish before in the big leagues. He's one for two. Darvish twirls, and Otani fouls it back. He checks on Camposano, making sure the Padres catcher is okay. Stephen, how many times we talked about uh, the top part of this Dodger lineup? You know, we're second batter in the game. The Dodgers, their first at bat with a runner in scoring position. An area, by the way, the last eight games, they barely hit 220. Oh, and two. Another pitch that Otani pulls well foul. And we have in front of that. Now, last night, Otani saw his eight-game hitting streak come to an end, going 0 for 2, but with his two walks, he pushed his on-base streak to 13, batting 359 in that stretch, 14 extra base hits, including four home runs, six walks, 11 runs scored, and eight RBIs. Another 0-2 from Darvish. Does not get the call. It was off the plate. 1-2 and two to Otani. Darvish checks the mound and looks back at Mookie Betts off second base. Mookie had a single and then a stolen base. Otani pokes one now down the left field line. It tails into the seats. 
Taylor talked about the sun that got stage fright evidently and left. <laughs> Back to an overcast day, but you can see the clouds really boogieing from our left to right. That's a meteorological term, is it not? Huh? <laughs> I think I'd get kicked out yeah. of meteorology yeah, the school. The clouds are boogieing. One ball, two strikes. Another pitch to Otani, who swings through this one. A strikeout for Darvish for the first out here in the bottom of the first. Dodgers trying to take the early lead for the first run of the game, just as they did in game two on Saturday. Freddie Freeman now. A new ball for you, Darvish, before he faces the left-handed Freddie Freeman. 0 for 4 with a strikeout on Saturday. He's 1 for 9 in the series. Darvish fires. Freddie swings at the first pitch. It is in the air, left field, slicing. And uh, right there in foul ground is Jerickson and Profar sliding right near the wall down the left field line to make the spectacular play for out number two. Looked like that ball might get into the seats. It did not. And the Padres left fielder was able to make a play on it. The Dodger fans, after the shenanigans last night, saying, really, he's got to make that play? Well, he can make a lot of plays. There's no question about it. We continue to see some very good plays defensively in this series. So it'll be up to two Smith, uh, Will Smith with two out here in the first inning. First pitch from Darvish is a fastball outside, ball one. Smith trying to bring Betts in after his leadoff base hit and third stolen base of the year. To start this series finale the right way, Darvish delivers. That misses as well, 2-0. There's always so much talk about you, Darvish's arsenal. He's got two kitchen sinks to throw at you. And the Dodgers faced him on opening day in the Soul Series on the 20th of March. He used eight of those offerings against the Dodgers. 2-0 the count on the catcher, Smith. 3-0. Well, there are some schools of thought also, does he throw too many pitches? Or is trying to be precise with eight pitches instead of being absolutely in command of maybe four? Now, that has been a question asked of Yu Darvish throughout his career. With his ability to spin the baseball, he is stuck with it. Now the 3-0 to Smith, who had no intention of swinging the bat. A slider breaks in there for strike one. Three balls and a strike to count. Mookie Betts drifting off second base, hoping his teammate can bring him home. The 3-1 from Darvish. It's a walk for Will Smith. And you, Darvish, is uh, kind of shoot the pitching mound, or he's, right now he's trying to kick dirt out of his spikes. But during that AB with Smith, as he could not locate his fastball, he seemed to be very frustrated. Now he's doing hopscotch, the, the heel clicks. I try and. Get the spikes back in to view. First and second, two out in the bottom of the first. Max Muncy steps in. Another ball from Darvish. So if you're Muncy, and now Darvish is slamming his right foot on the pitcher's mound, really in some distress, it seems, with the condition of the mound. He just walked Will Smith, so if you're Mike Smussy, how aggressive are you going to be? He holds off, but it's a curveball in for strike one. Wind blowing from left to right here at Dodger Stadium, looking at the flags in center field. Another peak at Mookie Betts by Darvish before this 1-1 to Muncy. Grounded foul into the Padre dugout. Well, an interesting scenario now, too, is that you have... Uh you know, some mud building up in, in your cleats. Would you like to get them out? Maybe get a tongue depressor, get on the mound. But then you've got that other thing. It's called the pitch clock. Tick, tick, tick. And it is ticking indeed down to 10 seconds. 
One two count to Muncie. Two on, two out in the first. The pitch from Darvish. Muncie holds up, smartly so. Two and two. A curveball that Muncie spit on. Max has faced Darvish 33 times with 33 ABs, I should specify. He's 8 for 33. It's a 242 batting average as a double, a home run, a walk, 13 strikeouts. Mookie Betts in position to score. Will Smith behind him on first. On the 2-2, Muncie swings and skies one high on the infield on the left side. Kim, the shortstop, backs up and makes the play. So two left on for the Dodgers. We finish a scoreless first inning at Dodger Stadium, the series finale against San Diego. The exclusive home of the Dodgers. AM570, LA Sports. Double deals are at the heart of baseball. Hitting a double, making a double play, or me, double fisting hot dogs. wasn't that far inside, and yet he still backed away. 1-0. Paxton working quickly. Evens the count with another fastball. <laughs> well, if you're not following the dry jokes from Mo and I here with regards to Jerks and Profar, then you missed all the quote-unquote drama last night. Down and in is ball two from Paxton. Two balls and a strike. With Gavin Stone working on a perfect game in the fifth inning with one out, Profar swings through, strike two, count squares up. Profar showed bunt, pulled it back, got back in to the batter's box, and the next pitch was inside a fastball. Here's the pitch from Paxton, fouled straight back, count stays two and two. And Profar was upset, thought that was intentional from Gavin Stone. Uh, Will Smith uh, told him to get back in the box, essentially, Another 2-2 from Paxton coming. Line drive right to the Max Muncy. There at the hot corner. One out here in the top of the second. Eh, Profar didn't like what Will Smith had to say. Uh, dug eight, dugouts and bullpens empty. Nothing really happened on the field. What happened post-game was an interview between a very own David Vasse and Will Smith. And DV asked Will Smith about the exchange. And the quote was, as Hassan Kim watches strike one from Paxton, nothing and one to the Padres shortstop. 
the quote, yeah, I don't know what his deal was. He thought we were trying to throw at him. I don't know why we would have thrown at him. He's kind of irrelevant, but I don't know. Strike two from Paxton on Kim. Nothing into the count. Well, the batter's box is uh, defined by... Let's see this 0-2 from James. That spikes. By the rectangular outline in the chunk. Yes. And the closest line for a left-hander, right-hander, is six inches off the plate. Well, the pitch last night was directly above that line. Big deal. A 1-2 from Paxton. Misses high on the fastball. Count even 2-2. I, I read two. something this morning, by the way, and you know, we talked about it and talked it to death. And it says, well, the unwritten rule, you got a perfect game going, you don't bunt. No, you do. You're trying to win. Check swing foul ball from Kim toward his own dugout. It was a good idea for Profar to, to, to think about bunting. Swinging the bat had not been successful. So at that point, it's a one-run game. You're trying to get on base. He can run well. Represents the tying run. No, you're trying to get on base. Another 2-2 from Paxton to Kim. Just missed high and tight. 3-2. and two. I find it amusing sometimes that people that are really removed, removed from the games are the ones that are writing about the unwritten rules. Hush. Another full count for Paxton to work in. He delivers to Kim, and he walks him. Fastball well high above the zone, so a one-out walk here in the top of the second. A second walk issued by Paxton, second base runner for San Diego. Now the catcher, Luis Camposano. Yeah, I'm with you, especially at that juncture in the game. You know, fifth inning, uh, yes, he's working on a perfect game, but that's uh, that's not like the Perfect game means nothing to the team that's trailing one to nothing. Correct. And a one-run game, but it was just the reaction. Kim takes off for second base. Smith's throw, the tag from Lux, not in time. A stolen base for Hassan Kim. Yeah, and that was stolen off of Paxton because uh, Kim was on the move before Paxton came out of the stretch position. Stolen base number five for Kim. He had 38 a season ago. The Dodgers are going to review this. They think the tag was made on the uh, the leg before the hand reached the bag. So it was a head first slide. Kim, and the helmet came flying off. And then he had to safe call at second base. So there's the official word confirming the challenge. Uh, Gavin Lux definitely got the left leg of Kim as he dove into second base. And I think I think the Dodgers definitely have a case here. The replay yep. review will take place in the replay review center back in New York City for the league office. And they will look at a couple of different angles, including the uh, ultra high speed camera. Frame by frame. Gavin Lux working to tag back and to the left. Back and to the left. After review, the call on the field is overturned. The runner is out. Los Angeles will keep the challenge. A successful challenge for the Dodgers. Wipes the bases clear. And a very good tag by Gavin Lux. Two down in the second. Right-handed Camposano. His open stance. Big leg kick holding. Waiting for strike one, which he watches from Paxton. The knuckle curve. He hit on the arsenal for Paxton in his first inning of work. I mean, this year... It, 91.2% of his pitches, either the fastball or the knuckle mm -hmm. curve. There are only two starting pitchers that have thrown the fastball a higher percentage than Paxton so far. A second curve from Paxton misses in the dirt. One ball, two strikes on Camposano. Paxton kicks and delivers, fouled over the net. No change in the count. Some people may say, wait a minute, why do you throw only the fastball? Well, 69% of the fastball. But he's able to spot it inside and outside. He works upstairs more than the pitches down below. Another one, two. Bounce to the left side. Muncy handles it. Moving to his left. Calmly throws across. Max Muncy has looked really good at the hot corner in this series. Throughout the weekend, he's making plays, and now he's getting love from his teammates. 
Paxton has kept the Padres off the board. Dodgers offense back to work when we come back for the bottom of the second. AM 570. LA's best sports talk. The real home of the Dodgers. It's Chevy truck season, and there's no... at Dodger Stadium. What is life? Teoscar Hernandez leads off the bottom of the second for the Dodgers facing Yu Darvish. Who misses inside Hernandez with ball one. Teo is one for three with a walk and a run scored last night. Two for eight in the series. Hits in six consecutive games. Has reached in each of his last 12. Delayed leg kick for Darvish. Popped back by Hernandez. One and one. During our pregame discussions, Mo, we were highlighting how the Dodgers turned the tide, both the bottom of the order and success with runners in scoring position last night. Hernandez bounces the ball to third, backing up was Rosario. Now he throws across in time to get Hernandez one down in the bottom of the second. Well, in the first inning here today, Mookie Betts singled the lead off and stole second base, and he stayed there. So the Dodgers 0 for 3. Start this one with runners in scoring position with two left on already. Yeah, they, they've had a lot of opportunities. In fact, uh, they start today looking back the last eight games. They've had 76 at bats with runners in scoring position during those eight games, but in this one, they're already 0 for 3. James Altman's turn. The lefty fouls back, strike one. The shadows are back. But the Suns return earn at Dodger, Dodger Stadium. Well, but the playing field about to level. Yeah. The late time it was sort of it just went story went through my mind he was complaining one night he goes hey the offense oh we're getting him over we're, we're getting him on but we can't get him in we're like a five minute tirade one and one as Darvish misses down and in to Altman and he kept saying well we're getting him on but we can't get him uh, in and we're getting him in we can't get him over and then finally he says we're not scoring <laughs> <laughs> to wrap it all up now Darvish is 1-1. Outman swings and pulls the ball right into the glove of Cronenworth. Deja vu for the San Diego Padre first baseman. Feel like that exact play happened last night. Diving to his right to take away a base hit from the Dodgers. Another good defensive play. The second good one by the Padres already in this ballgame. It's more tough luck for James Outman. Well, he gets a hang with him, but uh, from a, a mental standpoint, when you're trying to break out of it, it looks like he has. Just keep swinging the bat. They're going to fall in. 
Kike Hernandez with the bases empty and two down in the second inning. And Kike fouls away the first pitch, a sinker from Darvish, 0-1. Hernandez, two for four with a run scored last night. His first multi-hit game of the year. Boosted his average on the season by 40 points in one night. Now up to 219. Behind early, facing Darvish. Twirls and fires. Missing with a slider at ball one. Darvish didn't like that call. No arguments to be heard by Brian Knight or any home plate umpire for that matter. Now on the 1-1, Kike swings and ropes one right to the third baseman Rosario, who was well positioned. So the Dodgers with two well-hit baseballs, their last two batters of the second inning, but nothing to show for it. They go down in order in the second. We are scoreless and after two. Down on the, phone. the exclusive home of the Dodgers. AM570 LA Sports. Hey, LA fans, it's Max Muncy. It's time to strike out illegal dumping. Strike three, you're up. Dump trash and bulky items on our streets? That's not how we play ball. Be a team player. Close to 80 by the time the series with the Nationals completes. Paxson's 1-0 shatters the bat of Merrill. Everyone's okay. Lux fields the ball on the right side of the infield and throws out the center fielder. Uh, there are a lot of splinters to be picked up on the Dodger infield right now. Third base, number five. How much wood can a woodchuck chuck? <laughs> if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Even Merrill's reaction after that was, oh, Put that bat in a blender. My goodness. Now the last of the order for the Padres. And Eggy Rosario. One out in the top of the third. Paxton's pitch is a fastball for a strike. Paxton approaching 40 pitches on the day. Here's number 38. It's a big swing and a big miss from Rosario. Nothing in two. Maybe you have the answer to this. Unlikely. I, I, I just saw something that I've never been able to figure it out. First is 0-2 from Paxton and Rosario pulls it into left field for a base hit and should be extra bases. Gets all the way to the left field corner. Kike Hernandez digs it out but there won't be a throw in. He gets to the cutoff man Mookie Betts. A stand-up double for Eggy Rosario on an 0-2 pitch. So the question why do you bring a beach ball to a stadium? 
Um, yeah, again, like I said, unlikely I'd have the answer because it, in this case, th there is no answer. Uh, I'm not sure the infatuation. I'll let people like what they like, Mo. Maybe they're yeah. trying to like live it into existence with what the cold and What I would suggest is leave the beach balls at home, grab a glove, and come to the stadium. The lineup saying. turns over for San Diego. Xander Bogarts now, second baseman batting from the right side with a runner in scoring position. Ball one from James Paxton. Pitcher's mound, draped in a shadow, but Big Maple standing at six foot four has sunlight hitting his back as he twirls this 1 0 in for strike one. One with one on and one out in the third. Bogarts holds up on a fastball upstairs, two and one. Paxton looks at Rosario, comes home to Bogarts. Fastball upstairs again, a little inside. Well, that's where he likes to throw to right-handed hitters. He likes to crowd them. Does not want them to really extend their arms and, uh, and get good leverage on a pitch. Bogart's back into the starting lineup. Was off on Saturday. Was 0 for 5 in the series opener. Did have an RBI ground out. And he works a walk. So the last two have reached for San Diego. As the dangerous Fernando Tatis Juniors do. Number 23, Fernando Tatis Jr. Tatis flew out to left field in the first inning. Now two for four lifetime against the left-handed Paxton. Does have a home run in the books. The first pitch he sees is a strike. It was inside off the plate, but Paxton got the call from Brian Knight. First and second, one out in the third. Paxton misses arm side in the left-handed batter's box, one and one. Tatis Jr., now 25 years of age, originally signed with the Chicago White Sox, came to the Padres in a trade that sent James Shields the other way to Chicago. Paxton's 1-1 one, one misses the strike zone. Two balls in a strike. Really, his fifth big league season since all of 2022 was lost to injury and suspension. Violating the league's policy on performance enhancing drugs. Will Smith, the trip out to the mound gives us a chance to uh, remind you you can suit up this season at MLBShop.com. That's right. You can check out the largest selection of official jerseys, caps, t-shirts, collectibles, and more. So gear up with your Dodgers at MLBShop.com. A consultation on the mound was brought to you by Jacoby and Myers, the official law firm of the Dodgers. For a free consultation, call 1-800-5-MILLION because everyone deserves justice. And now everyone is set on the field for this 2-1 pitch from Paxton to Tatis Jr. That was a fastball. Close to the same spot earlier that was called a strike this one a ball so it's three and one it's a dangerous spot for a guy that has a lot of power Padres have first and second with one away in the third and that is back-to-back -back walks issued by Paxton to load the bases for Jake Cronenworth it came with a 3-1 curveball Cronenworth up, Manny Machado on deck, but not really on deck. If you recall in the opener, he was halfway between the on-deck circle on the warning track and the batter's box. The Dodgers took issue with that. Uh, Manny Machado did not budge and hit a home run in the first inning. Paxton misses with ball one to Cronenworth. And then right after he hit that home run, Machado turned to the dugout and stared at the Dodgers. For now, we focus on Jake Cronenworth, who walked his first time up. 
Bases loaded for the Padres. A scoreless game here in the top of the third. Cronor swings and slashes it foul down the left field line. When you begin to stare at the other team or with an opposing team member, don't be irritated if they stare back at you after they get you out. Paxton's 1-1 pitch to Cronenworth. Another foul ball. This one straight back into the net. One ball, two strikes. And somewhere along the line, if you stare long enough and mean enough and out of sequence enough, you wind up with a bruise somewhere. Now, things have definitely changed in that regard. Paxton now north of 50 pitches, 52 to be exact. This is a huge pitch. A 1-2 coming to Cronenworth with the bases loaded and one out. Here it comes, and Cronenworth grounds it up the middle. Mookie Betts is there, steps on the back for one, throws the first for two. That's how you get out of a bases loaded jam for James Paxton. A 6-3 unassisted double play. LA's best sports talk. The real home of the Dodgers. You've waited all year for baseball. And it's... Freddie Freeman to finish it off at first. Left-handed Gavin Lux facing Hugh Darvish. First pitch foul back to our left. Nothing in one. You know, sometimes what goes unnoticed is the defensive alignment. And if Benz is playing the normal shortstop position, there's no play that's made on that ball. Playing up the middle to pull and, boy, perfect placement. Darvish misses outstairs, or outside and downstairs. To Kevin Lux, one and one. That's why all the research, you know, you, you don't see it, you don't really hear about it that much, but the research, what the tendencies are with batters, in particular against that pitcher. Strike two from Darvish, one and two. It is kind of neat to look at some of the printouts that you can find online and see where, where hitters majority of the time hit a ball, whether it be a, a fastball, whether it be a, a breaking ball, off-speed pitch, how much of a difference is there? A 1-2 pitch misses down and in. Now the count scores up 2-2. Two two. Now the technology, too, is you're, you know, you, so you're following along with the game on a game day or whatever app you're using. You can see the positioning, mm -hmm. live positioning of players and see how defenses are aligned for, for certain batters. Darvish set for this 2-2 two, two to Lux, leading off the third. 
Ground ball to the right side. The second baseman, Xander Bogarts, again, right on the spot. Talk about positioning, Mo. I mean, there's so much data and information out there that teams in their baseball ops department, their analytics departments, are able to break down and sift through to put these players in the best position to make plays. Yeah, and even we can go on, you know, public sites for that matter, and be able to see what the, the tendencies are of players, not only for the current season, but what they have done over the last two or three. You can dial it in. It's actually very interesting when you have time to, to look at it and see and then say, hey, I'm going to go to a ball game and see if it, it holds true. Pookie Betts at the top of the order. Strike one to him. For example, for Betts, if you look at the spray charts, there's not too many of the base hits to the right side of the field. But you would not classify him as a strictly a pull hitter. He pulls one right at the shortstop on a line to Ha-Sung Kim. A line out for Mookie Betts. And again, the positioning coming into play as Kim was definitely shaded more towards third base. That was a rocket. And there have been a few for the Dodgers tonight that haven't yielded any results. That brings you back to the old process over results yeah. thing if you're a hitter. The other part, too, is, is that you Darvish hasn't exactly had the Dodgers popping up. I mean, they've been hitting the ball yeah. hard. What happens when they start dropping in? Now Shohei Otani, two out, nobody on in the third inning. Scoreless game, the final game of a three-game series. Darvish against Otani. The delivery is inside. The splitter just off the plate. Darvish thought it was close enough. Yeah. Does Profar play the deepest left field or what? Uh, he is uh, probably yeah. I mean, five feet. I'll tell you what. He could make change for one of the vendors up in the, uh, the <laughs> pavilion. <laughs> well, you could certainly spot him with his the, the bright yellow cleats. The Padres with their road brown. I mean, he's top. only six feet in front of the warning track. 1-0 pitch, Darvish to Otani. Shohei doesn't swing at ball two. Yeah. As I like to say, is he, he playing shallow pass, uh, uh, Glendale? <laughs> <laughs> the outfield certainly deep for Shohei Otani. And now we're staring at the view, close to the view that we are accustomed to seeing. Blue skies above Dodger Stadium. Finally on this Sunday... Darvish is set for his 2-0 pitch. Otani holds up because he's in front. 3-0. That was a good hold up right there on the breaking ball. You know, Darvish will just kind of tempt you. Uh, I mentioned the pregame show. You, Darvish, like any other pitcher, tries very hard to get you to expand the strike zone. Let's see what Otani does on 3-0. He's swinging and missing. Three and one. If Profar's position in Glendale, Otani tried to hit that ball to... Well, right now, Profar is <laughs> about, what, four feet in front of the warning track. And this is for a left-handed batter. Not just any lefty. That's Otani. Now 3-1 from Darvish. Otani in the air left side. That is tailing into the seats. Now three and two. Two players approaching Japanese history in the major leagues. Otani currently tied with Hideki Matsui for the most home runs by Japanese-born major leaguer with 175. His 3-2 from Darvish. Otani left side in the air. This time it's playable. Rosario, the third baseman, back along the line and shallow left makes the catch. So the Dodgers retired 1-2-3 in the third. After three, no score at Dodger Stadium. When you want Dodgers, the only home is AM570 LA Sports. You've waited all year for baseball. And it's finally here. Now.
Ryan Knight being hooked up with uh, a camera, I believe. Uh, I believe. Yeah, the ump cam for Sunday Night Baseball. ESPN, ESPN has the broadcast on the television side. We appreciate you hanging out with us on the audio front. Thanks to Rick Monday with producer and engineer Dwayne McDonald. On e back in studio, David Vasse behind us. I'm Steven Nelson. As we're watching the Dodgers and Padres finish up a three-game series, who wants to take it? It's up for grabs here today. No runs for either side, one hit for each side. James Paxton facing Manny Machado to start the fourth inning. And missing with ball one. And he missed inside. 55th pitch from Paxton now. That is inside, but it kicks the corner. A changeup, strike one. Yeah, defensive lineman infield to pull out. Feel a little bit the opposite way with Outman in, in center. Machado hits it hard, left center field. He is watching this one go, taking his time out of the batter's box yet again. For the second time this series, Manny Machado has gone bridge. His fourth home run of the season, 10th ribby, first run of the game. It's 1-0 San Diego. After Machado unloaded on one, he knew it right away, so did everybody in the ballpark. Well, Machado's not afraid to uh, admire his work. Be honest, when you hit a ball like that, you, you're allowed to. Uh, yep. <laughs> now Jerickson Profar. You know, the first thought is because as a hitter, you understand. I mean, when you when you really connect, there's like no vibration in the bat at all. It, it feels like it's like everything is in slow motion. You know, one pitch coming to Profar, nothing in two, Paxton in front. And sometimes the thought is, okay. Which row is that going to land in? It's not, is it going to be a home run? Which row will it land? The 0-2 delivery. Ground ball snared by Paxton on the mound. Some PFP in the game. First out of the fourth. Well, that'll refocus you if you're a pitcher after a home run. A comebacker. Hassan Kim, the shortstop. Paxton feeds him strike one. The Dodgers now trailing by one after the solo home run by Manny Machado. Big swing, big miss. Nothing in two again. That sort of underscores, again, how important that third inning was for James Paxton. When the Padres had the bases loaded and one out with Manny Machado on deck. Paxton got Jake Cronenworth to ground into a 6-3 inning ending double play. Get the game scoreless, but only for a short time. Now 1-0 as Paxton spikes a curveball. 1-2 the count. Hey, you said earlier, don't bring a beach ball. Bring a glove. The fan who caught Machado's home run caught it with a glove, Mo. Yeah, so you were hurt. Him. Can't catch him with a beach ball. <laughs> Well, you could, but it'll redirect and hit somebody in the face. Uh, it's ball two from Paxton on a fastball. Yeah, by the series. way, we mentioned to Paxton, his success has been to crowd right-handed hitters mm. inside. Well, that pitch was out over the plate. That's inside on the right-handed kid <laughs> who hey. is saying that might have got a piece of him. Well, he was yelling uh, as he was getting out of the way. Yeah, I was... I'd be terrified of mid-90s fastball, a special fastball <laughs> that James Paxson possesses at that. It's a full count. Here's the pitch. Ball four high, a one-out walk. That's five free passes. Two of them issued to Kim. And the last time he was on the base pass, he attempted to steal second, was ruled safe. The Dodgers challenged successfully to take him off the bases. We'll see what the game plan is here with one out in the fourth. Talking about guys that have pitches inside and, and, and he wonders, well, were they hit or not? 
kind of amused sometimes that when the managers say, hey, hold up, we're going to look at the replay. Mm -hmm. What, you don't trust your player? Camposano first pitch swinging, fly ball left field. Hernandez came in, now has to go back. He's in front of the wall, and he makes the catch. Made up for the mystery with his athleticism. And Luis Camposano was a few feet away. Yeah. Totally different ways to play left field. And Profar, who is, is a marvelous defensive player, I mean, for the Padres, there, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. He plays very deep. K.K. Hernandez plays, oh, 40, about 50 feet in front of the warning track. Where Profar, as we mentioned with Otani, maybe four to five feet in front. Which tells me a couple of things. Hernandez feels more comfortable going back on the ball than what Profar does. Mm -hmm. A long second out for Paxson. Kim still on first base. Paxson checked him back and then got a foul ball off the bat of Jackson Merrill for a strike. It's like over the years, I, I think back of uh, center fielders having played that position. Paul Blair with the Baltimore Orioles played the most shallow of any center fielder I have ever seen because he went back on the ball well. Check swing from Merrill, little number left side, and Max Muncy is not going to have a play. A swinging bunt for Jackson Merrill allows him to reach. The Padres have two on with two out in the fourth. Uh, Max's reaction after he fielded the ball like, you got to be kidding. Yep. Uh, Merrill's laughing at first base because he knows it too. And he just shrugged his shoulders. He said, oh, wait a minute. I was trying to avoid swinging. He winds up with a base hit. He could not have placed a bunt better than that check swing for Merrill. Now the number nine hitter, the third baseman, Eggy Rosario, who roped a double his last time up. Swings through strike one. Kim with a very big secondary lead from second base. Paxton looks at both base runners. His 0-1 pitch. Another swing, another miss. Nothing in two. A 94-mile-per-hour heater by Eggy Rosario. Short and compact player in a short and compact swing. He's got some pop. OPS now north of 1,000, 1018, following his third inning double. Nothing into the count on him. Paxton's pitch called strike three. Rings up Rosario to strand a pair to finish the fourth inning. But it started with a solo home run off the bat of Manny Machado. So the Dodgers are now chasing one run as we shift to the bottom of the fourth on the Dodgers Audio Network. AM 570. LA's best sports talk. The real home of the Dodgers. Medi-Cal renewals are happening now. All members' eligibility is reviewed once annually, and everyone's renewal date is different. You can check your renewal month in your online benefits cal...
Freddie Freeman. A sinker for a strike. The 0 1 pitch. Freeman keeps the bat on the shoulders because it's well outside. 1 and 1. Freeman flew out to left field in the first inning as the Dodgers left two runners on base, including Mookie Betts after his leadoff base hit and his third stolen base of the year. Ball two from Darvish to Freeman. Freddie now in front. After some bat waggles from Freddie. He's ready to go. Outside three and one. Freeman is deep in the box as you can get. And by deep, I'm talking as, as close to the uh, umpire behind home plate. As long as your foot is anywhere in contact with the lines that delineate the batter's box, you're fine. Three one. Freddie swinging away and fouling away. Now we're full. And sometimes you get a guy that throws hard, you get it as deep as you can. It gives you a few more inches, maybe to uh, to pick up the baseball and, and swing that bat that weighs about two pounds. Darvish's payoff is on the way. Freeman swings and pulls one into the camera well on the first base side to stay alive. He's seen Darvish enough in his career, nine for 33 lifetime. It's a 273 clip. A couple of doubles, a trio of homers, a quartet of walks. Another 3-2. Another swing from Freeman. A foul ball sprayed the other way. Just watching it. Here's the leadoff hitter at the bottom of the fourth. What Darvish has done, just looking at him, he has pitched very thoughtfully in the first offering. And the reason I bring that up, you look at the last two years, first pitch of it, that's a 440 average. Not today, only two first pitches have been put into play. Freeman pulls the ball, right field, hooking, and getting down into the right field corner. Tatis Jr. fields it and throws. There won't be a play at second. That's a stand-up double for Freddie Freeman. I tell you, Dodgers Stadium, we've got the fastest security guards <laughs> In baseball, the security guard sitting on a uh, folding chair all the way down the right field line of foul territory. He vacated the area. He ran over to straightaway right field on the warning track just to make sure he was not involved in the play. He got a great jump. <laughs> His pop time was elite. Yep. A leadoff double for Freddie Freeman. The second hit of the ball game for the Dodgers. The first since the first batter of the game, Mookie Betts. Here in the bottom of the fourth inning. So Freeman in scoring position for Will Smith. Will Smith still searching for his first knock of the series. He walked in the first inning. Darvish delivers. It's a foul ball. Back to the right side. Will Smith with another at bat. With a runner in scoring position. Second most in baseball last year in that spot. The guy that was number one. Most advanced runners in scoring position on deck, Max Muncy. Darvish's pitch called ball one, a fastball six inches off the plate. In last season, 53% of his plate appearances came with at least one runner on base. This season already, coming into this game anyway, the number was up to 59%. Whoever is in the cleanup spot for the Dodgers can feast. Will Smith in the air, left center, dropping down for a base hit. Dino Evil waving Freddie Freeman around. The cutoff is dropped by Bogarts. Freeman scores easily. The Dodgers have tied the game at one. Will Smith, one of the better contact hitters in this Dodger lineup. He never seems to be in a rush. They hit the ball, lets the ball come to him. RBI base hit for Will Smith. A 1-1 game in the bottom of the fourth. Still nobody out. Max Muncy's turn again. Strike one from Darvish. Will Smith does get that first hit of the series. Now his 13th RBI on the season. A 
The ball from Darvish to Muncie. Max popped out to short, ending the first inning. Trying to do damage in the fourth. Conservative lead for Smith off first base. Check swing for Will Smith. He did not go around. Camposano appealed to Chris Cuccioni. To no avail. 60 pitches thrown now for you, Darvish. Now 37 years young. Second oldest pitcher to start a game in the majors this year. Charlie Morton being the oldest. A 2-1 to Muncie. He swings through, strike two on a sinker that had some wicked movement from left to right. You're staring at home plate. Darvish out of the stretch with Smith on first base. A 2-2 to Muncie. Grounded foul, heads up in the Padre dugout. Top step, ducks safely. Teoscar Hernandez waiting on deck. Let's see another 2-2 from you. Muncie in the air, right field and deep. Will it stay fair? You bet it will. Into the Padre bullpen. A tie-breaking home run for Max Muncie. It's 3-1. You get the two guys back to back that had the most at bats with runners in scoring position last year. They knock in three between them. And for Max Muncy, his second career home run off of garbage. And with that trip around the diamond, stop by any one of the Daniels Jewelers locations and say home run for your free team bracelet, along with a $50 gift card towards any purchase of $99 or more. Daniels Jewelers own the dream. Home run number four for Max Muncy. The Dodgers go from one down to two ahead here in the fourth inning. And still nobody out. And Oscar Hernandez takes the ball. And that prompts a visit from Luis Camposano. This consultation on the mound brought to you by Jacobia Myers, the official law firm of the Dodgers. For a free consultation, you can call 1-800-5-MILLION. Because everyone deserves justice. Second home run of the year allowed by you, Darvish. The second home run for Muncie off Darvish, as you just alluded to, Mo. Teoscar Hernandez now. Fly ball left field. Profar and Merrill converging in left center. Hand up for Merrill because he's got it in front of the warning track. I think Teoscar Hernandez is about six feet from making a back-to-back -back blast for the Dodgers. Merrill caught that ball right in front of the 375 mark in left center. Hitters talking, they say, uh, just missed it. That's the first out of the bottom of the fourth inning. James Outman is up. Trying to ambush Darvis. Waves at strike one. Darvish in that delivery gave that uh, little double leg kick trying to change the uh, the timing of hitters. <laughs> As if he isn't difficult enough to try and get a hit off of, given all his offerings and his ability to spin the baseball. He spins ball one to Altman, count level. Altman lined out his first time up, another hard hit ball. Without a result for James, he's got to stick with it. As the tide definitely changed for him in Minnesota. 1-1 pitch is fouled back by Altman. 1-2. Here at a six-game on base streak into the series finale to James. His hits in four of his last five. National League Rookie of the Year finalist in 2023. Top five among all rookies in OPS on base percentage. Homers and runs scored. Trying to score some more runs for the Dodgers in the fourth. 
Not going to swing at that ball down into the dirt right at Outman's feet. It's two and two. That 2-2 pitch from Darvish misses outside, and Altman has worked this full. Now, the hitter profile on James Altman is interesting. There, there's not a ton of chase, but there is swing and miss. Yep. Now the payoff got a piece of it. Called off a slider from Darvish to stay in the batter's box. Last year, his chase percentage was in the top 27% of the league. He had the second-worst whiff rate and third-worst K rate in baseball. Another 3-2 from Darvish. Outman puts it in the air, high in the air. Shallow left. Rosario going back. He's still going back, and he's got it. That's out number two in the fourth. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Dodgers Audio Network. This is L.A. Dodgers Baseball. KLAC Los Angeles, KYSR, HD2 Los Angeles, and iHeart Radio Station. We're back for Kike Hernandez's second plate appearance. He lined out to third. His first time up. The Dodgers have three runs here in the fourth inning to take this 3-1 lead. Kike fouls back strike one. First three reached and scored. The last two retired by Yu Darvish. Watchful eye for Hernandez. He's a fastball down and away. One ball, one strike. Darvish kicks and fires. Kike takes. Ball two. Starting to see some stretching now in the San Diego bullpen. As you Darvish has hit 75 pitches here with two out in the fourth inning. Now Kike turns on a baseball. He is too far out in front of that. It hooks into the seats. Slider right down the middle. Still two balls, two strikes. Darvish delivers. Kike stays alive. Now ball into the net. DK has just one hit off Darvish, lifetime, one for eight. One hit, a triple. Two balls, two strikes. Ooh, look out, Kike Hernandez pulled the hands in at the last second to get out of the way of a splitter from Darvish. Now it's a full count, three and two. Thirty-two pitches thrown for Darvish here in the fourth inning. And Kike Hernandez get to number 33. Here it comes. It's a 3-2. It's in the dirt. And it's ball four. Darvish hits his glove with his pitching hand. Frustrated. He wasn't able to end the inning. Two out walk in front of Gavin Lux. Down to second baseman in the ninth spot of the order. Before Gavin Lux can see any pitches, there's a mound meeting for San Diego. Ruben Ebla, the pitching coach, talking with Hugh Darvish. The infield joining him, getting on the same page. 
Top of the order on deck with Mookie Betts. Did Gavin Lux keep this fourth inning going? It's already been a lengthy one for the Padre right-hander. Former Dodger, this is his 14th career regular season start against his former club. To this juncture, he's 4-5 and five in those games. The Dodgers have scored three runs off him in this inning. Take a 1-0 Padre lead. A 3-1 Dodger advantage. Now we're ready. Darvish against Lux. One on two out. Hernandez slides back safely. The pickoff attempt from Darvish not successful. In the bottom of the order come through on this Sunday as it did on Saturday night. First pitch to Lux is downstairs ball one. Seven through nine on Saturday. Four for 11 with a walk. Three runs and a ribby. Accounted for four of the team's eight hits. Don't have one yet today. Ball two from Darvish. Cloud cover here at Dodger Stadium. So it's overcast right now. The two on the way from Darvish. Gavin Lux is swinging away, putting a ball in the air to center field, pushing Merrill back to the warning track. And right on the edge of it. He hauls in the third out, but the first three reached and scored in the fourth inning. The biggest blast, a two-run home run for Max Muncy. That made it a 3-1 game. The Dodgers have the lead as we shift to the fifth. This is AM570 LA Sports. Inning, now working with the lead. Padres jumped in front. Manny Machado's solo home run in the top of the fourth. And the Dodgers punched right back in the home half of the inning with a crooked number scoring three. So they're ahead by two. So we welcome you back to Dodger Stadium for the top of the fifth inning. That's Rick Monday. I'm Steven Nelson. Paxton Wolsey, the first of the order for San Diego. And Xander Bogarts. Veteran infielder, I have to say that now because he's been moved off shortstop here in his second season in San Diego, now at second base. Fastball misses high from Paxton, ball one. Year two of an 11-year, $280 million contract. A 1-0 popped him up. Right center, 
Teoscar Hernandez calls out, calls off Outman and makes the catch. And Teoscar Hernandez saying, hey, James, I think you're a little too close to me there. Right fielder, Fernando Tatis Jr. No harm, no foul. One away. Nothing wrong with catching a ball by committee. Fernando Tatis Jr. fouls back a strike into the net. We've talked about it a few times with Tatis Jr. Loves hitting here at Dodger Stadium. Paxton's 0-1, misses high, 1-1. One one. 30 games played here, 11 homers, 22 RBIs. Paxton's 1-1. One one. That looked pretty good, a changeup off the plate, called ball two. Sometimes there are certain ballparks that, for whatever reasons, you either see the ball a little bit better, Inside ball three, three and one. Or you have a pitching staff that you're going to be batting against that for whatever reasons you see their pitches, their, their pitches are, are what you handle best. And Tatis draws a walk, dancing out of the way of ball four. One out base runner for San Diego. One of those 11 home runs immortalized here at Dodger Stadium. It came back in September of 2021. Hit at 467 feet over the pavilion. There's a plaque there recognizing that mark, which I'm sure Tony Gonsolin uh, could care less for. Ball one to Jake Cronenworth, left-handed first baseman standing in. Tatis Jr. now on first base. One out in the fifth. There's a strike from Paxton, trying to author that all-important shutdown inning. Following a frame when your offense puts up some runs and gives you a lead. Runner words hit into one, ground ball double play, why not make it two? I like where your head's at, Mo. The 1-1 to Cronenworth. Tapped it foul. One and two. How many coaches have said, hey, you got to keep your head in the game? To me? <laughs> I lost count. No, 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 no time not to you, but okay. just overall. Backs in now north of 80 pitches. Looks at Tatis. Crouches off first base. Comes home to Cronenworth. Missing upstairs of the ball. Count squares up. And Paxton has not been pinpoint today. Cronenworth helps sell ball three. We're full. Paxton now with 83 pitches. Just 46 strikes. He has six walks in the game. A 3-2. Cronenworth. Bouncer right side of Lux. Flips to Mookie for one. And the Dodgers turn two. Ask and you shall receive, Rick Monday. Well, if you order, it might come... Uh... It might come true. <laughs> A second inning-ending double play induced by James Paxson against Jake Cronenworth, who keeps the Dodgers in front 3-1. We're in the middle of this ball game on the Dodgers Audio Network. I can live my dreams. I can rewrite my story. I can create a future I look forward to. When you enroll at a California community college, you open the door to unlimited possibilities. Whether you want to transfer to a four-year...
Dodgers. You Darvish still in the game for San Diego. Five-time All-Star. We'll face a seven-time All-Star. Darvish against Mookie Betts. Dodgers in front by two. All four runs between these teams. Scored in the last inning. Mookie Betts pulls one to left field. Right at Jerks and Profar, who hardly had to move. A looping fly ball, one away. Well, tomorrow night, the Washington Nationals come in. That's a 7 10 start, and the first 40,000 fans in attendance are going to receive a Jackie Robinson Brooklyn Dodgers cap. Presented by UCLA Health. Come on out and join us. Dodgers.com slash promotions. Otani against Darvish. Shohei 0 for 2. Struck out in the first. And then a little fly out in the third. First pitch from Darvish. Gets the outside corner. Strike one. Nothing and one. The pitch from Darvish. Otani swings through strike two. Alluded to the Japanese history that both of these players are on the cusp of. Only got to Shohei's part. Most home runs by a Japanese born player. Tied with Hideki Matsui currently with 175. Darvish has 103 wins, trailing only Hideo Nomo. The most ever by a Japanese born pitcher. The 0 2 fouled by Otani off of him. He's done that several times this year. Based on his reaction, there have been worse up to this point. He's tapping that left foot right now. Brian Knight checked on him. So he said, I'm okay, thank you. Off the uh, left big toe. Staying alive, keeping it an 0-2 count. Darvish twirls and fires. Otani pokes the bat out and fouls it back. Splitter off the plate. Close enough that Otani had to swing. Dodgers got three consecutive hits in the fourth. A double from Freeman, a single by Smith, the home run from Muncie to take this 3-1 lead. And with one out in the bottom of the fifth, Darvish again to Otani. Tipped it into the glove of Camposano. Darvish with just his second strikeout today. Both have been facing his friend Shohei Otani. Freddie one for two with that double. First pitch swinging. Bounce to the right side. Well foul. Freddie's been fighting for the field in the past week or so. The one's inside. Count levels up. When he gets it, look out. And the bat. He averaged 308. Yeah. OPS 825. Well, he yeah. feels he's in a slump. Yep. He's different. Darvish is 1 1. Fouled away by Freddie. Yeah. He started the day at 302. A lot of guys are saying, hey, Freddie, what can I do in order to get up to 302? And he goes, well, I'm battling to get out of the slump I'm in, hitting at 302. He did think at the end of spring training he was pulling the ball too much. 1-2 count he's facing. He fights one into center field. Uh, Merrill trots in, puts the glove up, and completes a 1-2-3 fifth work by you Darvish. He's north of 90 pitches at this point. The Dodgers are north of the Padres on the scoreboard. Still 3-1 after 5 on the Dodgers Audio Network. This is AM570 LA Sports. 
Let's talk about Galpin Ford, Mike Schwartz, and Paul Ulbrich. What a dynamic duo they got going right now. Galpin Ford has got one of the largest inventories of Fords anywhere on earth, the F-150. Are you looking for hybrids? Are you looking for electric vehicles? The new Mustangs, they've got them ready for immediate delivery, and you don't even have to go in. Now, if you want to, right off the 405 at Roscoe, ask for Mike Schwartz, ask for Paul Ulbrich. You want to do everything online? Hit up galpinford.com. Machado led off the fourth inning with a solo home run, a no-doubter to left center field. It takes a fastball high for ball one from Paxton. Paxton now at 85 pitches here. 1-0 coming, now it's downstairs. 2-0. A good pitch from James, just a little low. They get 3-0. And, oh. and for Machado, still at the DH. Still not 100% following elbow surgery in October. Right elbow extensor tendon repair. There's a strike from Paxton. He's on the board 3-1. and one. Played through tennis elbow last year, did Machado. The doctors actually told him he may not feel 100% again until next year. It's a leadoff walk. That's been... The theme of the day for James Paxton. It's walk number seven for James, but it's been Ben don't break up to this point. Well, the Nationals in tomorrow night, then on uh, Saturday, April 20th, against the Mets. First 40,000 fans in attendance will receive a Walker Bueller bobblehead presented by Bank of America. Come out and join us, Dodgers.com slash promotions. Now jerks and Profar, switch hitter. Hitting from the right side, facing Paxton. He's in front of James 1-0. Still no action of the Dodgers' bullpen, but way too many free passes, obviously. He's already eclipsed his total from his first two starts combined. That's another ball, 2-0. His first two starts as a Dodgers, as a Dodger, 11 innings, 6 yeah. walks. Well, Here there's going to be seven. Yeah, there's going to be a meeting right now. Will Smith will go out, and Mark Pryor, the pitching coach, is going to the uh, bullpen phone, and we will see some action of the Dodgers' pen soon. Yeah, right now, it's just stretching. Conversation between Smith and Paxton has completed. Will's back behind the plate. Next to his new friend, James Paxton. Ryan Brazier is the one that's going to get loose. Yeah, Profar fouls away a strike. Paxton, the first Dodger with seven walks in a game since 
Rich Hill back in May of 2017 against St. Louis. Two balls and a strike to count on Profar. Make it two and two. Fastball caught the inside corner. And Profar called time was pleading his case to no avail. I thought it was inside. And Brian Knight positioned himself between Profar and Will Smith. <laughs> that one tumbles inside for another ball, another full count for James Paxton. One on, nobody out in the top of the sixth inning. The Dodgers leading the Padres 3-1. And that is another ball and another walk. Back-to-back -back free passes. Now eight in the game for the Dodgers lefty. So the tying runs aboard for San Diego in the sixth. A trip to the mound by Will Smith to get more time for Brazier to crank it up and get ready in the pen. Max Muncy will join Smith this time on the mound. This is where the clock also comes into effect. Eight seconds left on the uh, conference. It's Brazier in the pen. He'll be trying for some redemption against the Padres in this series. His last game was on Friday night in the opener. As the bullpen gave up a four-run lead in the sixth and seventh. First run off Daniel Hudson, yep. then three off Brazier. Here comes Roberts. So the conversations on the mound gave Brazier enough time to get hot. He's going to inherit two base runners with nobody out in the sixth inning. As Dave Roberts is about to meet James Paxton, who has his left hand on his hip. Was not his sharpest day, but he's only given up one run up to this point. It's a warm reception from the fans here at Dodger Stadium. Brian Brazier trotting in from the bullpen. We'll be right back on the Dodgers Audio Network. Freddie Freeman here. When it comes to our kids' health, you don't settle for second best. Meet Dr. Santana from California's number one Autry Orthopedic Center at Children's Hospital. HydroFurnace.com. Ryan Brazier going to try and put out a little fire here in the sixth inning. Manny Machado on second, Jerks and Profar on first base. Ha Sung Kim at the plate. The Dodgers trying to hang on to a 3 1 lead here with nobody out in the top of the six. First pitch from Brazier to Kim. This is low on the slider. 1 0. Now, last year when Brazier came over from the Dodgers, being let go by the Red Sox, Added a cutter to his arsenal and really just revitalized his season and really his career. The Dodgers brought him back. Level 
Pulls the count with a strike, a fastball, and they're making it one and one. And last year, you think so many times he had jams inherited, and he got out of them. See if he can replicate that success here in 2024. One one pitch to Kim. High and tight. Two and one. One of the things he's had going for him also, Steve, is the fact that he has, uh, for the most part, last couple of years, owned the strike zone. Padres got to him for three earned runs on Friday. Three balls and a strike now. The Hassan Kim. First two batters of this inning walking against James Paxton. Finish with eight total, most in a game this year in the majors by any pitcher. Brazier's 3-1, and that's a walk. The Dodgers have walked them loaded here in the six. The last time a Dodger pitcher had eight walks in a game was back in June of 2013. I haven't seen any Matt McGill jerseys in a minute here. He had nine in a game at Colorado. Bases loaded, nobody out. It's the catcher, Luis Camposano, facing Ryan Brazier. Padres have the tying runs in scoring position. There's strike one, a 94-mile-per-hour sinker from Brazier. Big swing, big miss, brings Camposano to a knee. Couldn't get to the slider from Ryan Brazier. He's ahead, nothing in two. A little different story. You're looking for heater, and you get that ball that's moving at the last second, the slider. Camposano, ground ball to short. Mookie Betts to Gavin Lux for one, and they turn two. Andy Machado crosses home plate. The Dodger lead cut in half. But Ryan Brazier gets two outs on that one pitch. Third double play of the afternoon for the Dodgers. Now a 3-2 game. Pro far on third base, Jackson Merrill. The exciting rookie. Watches the ball. Merrill in the eighth spot tonight. He led off on Saturday, joining Fernando Tatis Jr.'s teammate and Roberto Alomar is the only Padres bat lead off at age 20 or younger a 1-0 grounded by no Mookie Betts got it his throw to first skips by Freddie Freeman and the throw gets into the dugout I thought for sure that ball was going to get through the right side a terrific diving stop by Mookie Betts but he could not throw out the speedy Merrill and not only is the game now tied at three with the ball going into the dugout. It advances Merrill to second base. All right, incredible stop by Mookie Betts. He was almost 20 feet to the first base side of the uh, outfield behind second base. That throw he made, he dropped down from the side, and it just tailed away, and there was no way that Freddie Freeman, in spite of a very long reach being six foot five, Freeman could not get it. A single for Jackson Merrill, an RBI one at that. And an E6 puts him on second base. Now it's Tyler Wade. Pinch hitting for Eggie Rosario. In the final spot of the order for San Diego. Brazier's cutter misses low. Ball one. That resets the game. 3-3. Three, three. Dodgers walk the bases loaded here in the sixth. The first two passes issued by Paxton, then Brazier followed. On the ground, off the bat of Wade. Mookie scoops it up and throws to Freddie Freeman. That's the last out of the top of the sixth inning. The Padres get the two they needed to tie the game. It's 3-3 in the middle of the sixth on the Dodgers Audio Network. When you want Dodgers, the only home is AM570 LA Sports. Find your funner state of mind at...
Columbus on Friday night. The seventh scoreless outing for De Los Santos in his eighth appearance of the year. And a walk and a strikeout in the tenth inning of that 11-inning victory for San Diego on Friday. Will Smith swings at the first pitch. A fastball right down the middle. And he goes into the net. Four, five, and six for the Dodgers in the bottom of the six. The game now tied at three. The Padres evening things up with two in the top half of this frame. You now what they say about walks, Mo. Well, there's no defense to play against a walk. Yeah. Even if the runner gets injured walking down to first base, you use a pinch runner for him. And the attention turns back to the bats, and Will Smith is a big one. Drops a base hit into right center field. Again, showing why he's such a tough out. Doing that behind in the count. No two pitch. Start the sixth inning with a base runner for the Dodgers. Yeah, shaking his right hand a little bit as he looks into his own dugout. Got jammed to perfection, we might add, with a base hit. Maybe be a take that ball moment. Yeah, ironic call of course for the Dodgers now, Max Muncy gave everything to the baseball back in the fourth inning he's ahead of De Los Santos here one ball no strikes a two run home run that broke a 1-1 tie can he break a 3-3 tie in the sixth it's downstairs ball two Muncy now with four home runs 12 ribbies Uno with Will Smith on first base. Nobody out in the bottom of the six. The pitch to Muncy is outside. 3 0. Oh. Oscar Hernandez on deck. For De Los Santos. And you got Max Muncy at the plate. 3 0 count. Do you dare? The 3 0 pitch. Muncy takes. Called strike one. Ooh. Good pitch for De Los Santos. Look at it. It just missed, missed the edge, but he got the call. Now three and one. De Los Santos out of the stretch. Kicks the leg and fires. Big swing, big miss. We're full. Paid off. De Los Santos to Muncy. Popped up. Back behind home plate. And it will get out of play. Max with home runs now in three of his last four games. Following the fourth inning shot. We'll do another 3-2. The pitch to Muncy. Popped up. This time it's on the infield. Camposano tosses the mask. Cronenworth calls him off. One away. Just in front of the dirt. Beyond home plate. Cronenworth securing that first out. Richmond stays at first base for Teoscar Hernandez. Tail 0 for 2 in this game. 2 for 10 in the series. Takes the first pitch from De Los Santos. A slider in the middle for strike. And a strong early first impression. His first year in Dodger Blue. A one year, $23.5 million contract. To Oscar Hernandez lets the bat go and puts the ball in the air. Right center field, high in the air. Merrill will take it from Tatis in right center. Uh, about 15 feet in front of the warning track. For the second out, 
Uh, Will Smith again can't go anywhere. It's James Altman's turn. And here comes uh, Mike Schilt, the manager, and he's pointing to the bullpen to get the lefty to face Altman. That would be Yuki Matsui, who's been warming up. Now Altman will do his homework on Matsui. The Dodgers will see for the second time in this series. They witnessed him on Friday night in the opener. But De Los Santos, after giving up the leadoff single to Will Smith, got the next two outs. He's out of the game, and we'll be right back. In the history of Dodger Stadium, there's been 18 total rainouts. Hi, I'm Dave Roberts. As manager of L.A.'s favorite ball club, Dodgers and Padres now tied at three at the bottom of the six. Will Smith on first base, two out. James Altman waves and misses at strike one. A split finger from the left-handed Yuki Matsui. He gave up one hit, walked one, struck out two, pitching a scoreless seventh inning on Friday night. His first year in the major leagues coming over from NPB in Japan. The 0-1 to Altman swings through, strike two. And last year at a higher batting average against left-handers, 254, compared to 247 against righties. Less slug to be sure, though. Just one of his 23 home runs facing southpaws. Getting a chance to hit here. Rolls a foul ball into the Padre dugout. Stays nothing in two. I don't know was hitting the left-handers last year and for that average you were talking about. He was, he didn't try to pull the ball up. He went left center, right center, went with the pitch. I've seen that short and sweet swing these last few games. You have to utilize it here. Nothing in two. Here's the pitch. He fights one in to shallow left. Just beyond the infield dirt is the third baseman Wade. And that is the last out of the sixth inning. So Will Smith's leadoff base hit stranded as the Dodgers next three retired in order. Dodger fans. This is AM570 LA Sports. It's the bottom of the ninth. The game's on the line. And your small business needs a loan. Fast. Go to ondeck.com. The small business lender trusted.
appearances with AAA Oklahoma City. Gave up three runs in five innings with five Ks. He has the top of the order for the Padres in a 3-3 ball game. Xander Bogarts sees ball one. Bogarts, Tatis Jr., and Cronenworth against Fire Eisen. AP's 1-0 pitch to Bogarts. That misses downstairs 2-0. Former residents of the American League East, now in the National League West, Fire Eyes and, and Bogarts. 2-0 on the way. That's in there for strike one. Big thing for JP in the last couple of years is getting that shoulder healthy. Squares the count two and two. Speaking of getting healthy. Earlier today, there was a brief uh, pause, not a whole lot of rain. They took the tarp off, and Blake Trinan was pitching on the mound to, to hitters. Check swing foul ball for Bogarts. Count remains the same, two and two. So and not really an extended sim game, but uh, the good news is, is that Trinan is getting closer and closer to coming back. Blake Trinan, Bruce Star Gratterall. Mm -hmm. That will help solidify and settle the Dodgers' bullpen. In front of Evan Phillips, the 2-2 is in the dirt. It's a little low from JP there, and now we're full. Righty facing the right-handed Bogarts. Here's the pitch, and another walk to the Dodgers staff. That's how the lead was given up in the six. Boy, I tell you what, it, it, it's hard to uh, shut down the opposing team when you issue nine free runners. And that's exactly what's happened so far. And the Dodgers led three to one. And Manny Machado started the game with a solo home run. That came in the fourth. The Dodgers responded with three of their own in the fourth. Dante's Jr. shows bunt, pulls it back, and it's strike one called on him. Yeah, let me correct that. That's 10 walks. Bogart's on first. Tati's Jr. up to plate. Cronenworth on deck. Fire Eisen comes home. And Tati's holds up on ball one. One ball, one strike to count to the right fielder. Will Smith with the back pick, and Bogart's got his foot on the bag before Freeman could tag him. It's a play by Will Smith trying to catch the Padres' second baseman sleeping off first. There he remains next to Freeman. Two and one to count to Tatis Jr. Fire Rising's pitch is grounded through the left side. And Bogarts heads to third base. First and third for San Diego. Nobody out in the seventh. Good judgment also by Kike Hernandez. Did not throw to third. He had no chance to really get the runner to third. Had he gone in that direction, just waiting was Tatis. He would have rounded first and, and headed down into scoring position. Yeah, that ground ball well beyond the reach of Mookie Betts. Between him and second base. Well, can Cronenworth hit into his third double play of the afternoon? <laughs> he walked in the first, then ended the four, ended the third and fifth, rather, with double plays. Fire Eisen would like to continue that trend, but he misses with ball one. It was 6-3 in the third, then 4-6-3 in the fifth. Bogarts and Tatis Jr., the base runners. The pitch to Cronenworth. 2-0. and oh. As Fire Eisen lost that changeup high. Tatis Jr. aboard for the third time with his first hit of the, hit of the game. There's two of the Padres' ten walks. A big hack, no contact for Cronenworth, 2-1. Cronenworth 
are just going to stand there and ambush a fastball. Oh, did he take a cut? Manny Machado on deck for San Diego. Fire eyes and looks at Bogarts. Turns his attention to Cronenworth. And then picked off attempt on Tatis Jr. No real play there. At the corners with nobody out in the seven. A 3 3 game. Now a 3 1 count. Oh, do you send Tatis here? If it's a cold strike or even a swinging strike, I doubt the Dodgers would throw through. Oh, with the go ahead run at third base. Watch Tatis. He's not going anywhere. Doesn't matter. Ball four high. Yep. This has been a clinic on how not to pitch as far as issues of walks. Turned up to 11. 11 free passes for the Dodgers pitching staff today. Bases loaded, nobody out. Manny Machado up. A ball. That was a good pitch on a changeup at the bottom of the zone, but the call did not go Fire Eisen's way. Fire Eisen recalled yesterday along Nick Ramirez to complete the staff. This 1 0 pitch from Fire Eisen popped him up. Right side of the infield. Luck settling underneath it. A big first out. Runners stay where they're at. Still loaded. There's transactions for the Dodgers coming with Bobby Miller going onto the injured list with right shoulder inflammation. Everything that we have seen reported, has been reported by our own David Vasse, is that it's not believed to be serious at this juncture. Check back in in about a week. Connor Brogdon also joined Miller on the IL plantar fasciitis. Jerickson Profar with the bases loaded. Fire Eisen falls behind him. Ball one outside. Padres across the diamond here in the seventh inning. One away, and Profar hits it hard into center field. Altman hustling back at the wall, off the wall. Bogart scores. Tatis following. It will be a bases clearing double for Jerks and Profar as Cronenworth crosses the plate. It's now a 6 3 San Diego lead. Three passes. There's no defense against him. And that was a fastball up and away. And the work for Profar is done. He's getting a warm reception in the Padre dugout. He's been lifted for a pinch runner in Jose Azokar. And J.P. Fireisen is about to be lifted out of the game by Dave Roberts. Alex Vessia has been warming in the bullpen for L.A. He will take the ball next when we return on the Dodgers Audio Network. Get Spectrum One and catch the Los Angeles Dodgers all season. Stream over 140 live L.A. Dodger games on all of your devices on us. Tons of hits, wins, memorable moments, and more. It's a real home run. Live Dodger games. That's a $149 value now included with Spectrum One. Go to Spectrum.com slash Dodgers for full details. Offer subject to change. Valid for qualified residential customers only. Service not available in all areas. Restrictions apply. Subject to national exclusivities. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Medi-Cal renewals are happening now.
which is going to sort out a lot. A swinging strike for Camposano. Yeah, well, Dave Roberts said it in spring training, and it's, it, it follows through every year. He says, this is a performance-based occupation. Alex Vestia trying to recapture his form, and they're going to get him at third. Well, so far, the pitch runner trying to take off for third base on the left-handed Vestia, who saw him. And they got the ball over to Max Muncy in time. Well, Vesia looked back, and yeah. there was no runner at second base. Lux was pointing to third. And Mike Schilt, the Padres manager, signals for the headsets, though. We'll, well take another look. You know what they, uh, they could also be looking at is the new rule with obstruction. That's right, with the... Yeah. San Diego's challenging the out call at third base. Yeah, the tag was not to the right foot that hit the bag. It was the uh, left foot that was tucked underneath the right leg that was tagged. That's something that umpires were very intentional about enforcing during the spring. The defenders having to basically yield to the base runner. Again, the challenge was the safe call, or the out call, rather. You can see Max, like, you know, putting a lot of pressure on that left leg to stay out of the way of Azokar's slide. But Padre said first and second with one out here in the seventh, Azokar, the pinch runner for Profar, who just had the bases loaded double that cleared the bags. They're back at replay central, they're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about ten different videos at different angles. But the burden is, is there sufficient evidence to overturn? We await the call. Review. The call on the field stands. The runner is out. San Diego will lose a challenge. The announcement from Chris Guccione. As far as the positive reaction at Dodger Stadium. Him on that play. Did scamper up to second base. Now only one Padre on the base pass. And two out in the inning. A 1-2 count to Luis Camposano. Right-handed catcher. Here's the pitch from the lefty Vesia. Upstairs, swing and a miss. Couldn't lay off the 94-mile-per-hour heater. Vesia lets out a roar. Now the Dodgers hope their bats can do some roaring to try and get the team back in it. They trail by three, 6-3 in the middle of the seventh at Dodger Stadium. AM 570. Broadcasting from the heart of Los Angeles. Your official home of the L.A. Dodgers. AM 570 L.A. Sports. Hey, this is Adrian Gonzalez. Daniel's Jewelers is a proud sponsor of the trip around the diamond and your family jeweler since 1948. Mention Home Run at any other stores to receive a free team bracelet and $50 off any purchase of $99 or more. And don't forget, everyone is approved for credit at Daniels. So visit DanielsJewelers.com now to find the nearest store. Own the dream with Daniels Jewelers.
against the left-handed Yuki Matsui. Back out after a lengthy top half and bouncing a splitter for ball one. The Padres up 6-3 on the Dodgers. San Diego now has 19 runs scored in this series so far. 11 of them have come in the 6th and 7th innings of these three games. So he drops in a strike on Hernandez to level the count. On the ground, left side. On a one hop, Kim fields it and throws across. One away. Well, the Nationals end tomorrow night, and on Tuesday, it's Hello Kitty night. And if you purchase a special ticket pack, you receive a Hello Kitty bag. So for tickets, come on out and join us. Dodgers.com slash ticket packs. Nobody on. One out. Gavin Lux. Lux is 0 for 2 in this game. He's in the left-handed Matsui. And taking a strike. Story up to this point, as we've been talking about Mo, the walks for the Dodger staff, 12 of them, one intentionally. And the Dodger bats help change the story. Luck swings through a strike, nothing in two. Too many free passes. That's a good team across the field from the Padres. They don't need much more help. See some two strike hitting from Gavin Lux. The delivery from Matsui. Swing and a miss, strike three. <laughs> Lineup will turn over and bring Mookie Betts back up to bat. One for three, let off the game with a single, stole his third base of the year. Lined out in the third, flew out in the fifth. First pitch swinging, fouls away, strike one. Padre six, Dodgers three, two out in the bottom of the seventh. Betts waiting on an 0-1 pitch, here it is. It's ball one. Pitch from Matsui. Another splitter that misses low. Two and one on Mookie. So he looks toward first base. Nobody's there. Comes back to Betts. Three and one. Can't locate the split finger right now. Mookie swinging, jam shot right back to Matsui, who fields it on the fly. 8 9 and 1, retired in order in the seventh. The Dodgers still down by three. AM 570. LA's best sports talk. The real home of the Dodgers. Welcome to the future, Dickerson. All of your trophy muscles are irrelevant. What are you talking about? For 46 years, the Ford F-Series has been the best-selling truck on the market. But it's not just because it's got...
Tyler Wade and then Xander Bogarts. Alex Vesia back for more work. Strike one delivered. Padres tied it with two in the six. Got three in the seventh on a bases clearing double from Jerickson Profar. Of course, the center of attention on Saturday night. Vesia misses with the ball. Count levels up. Hard hit ball to center field. Hit off the wall. Swing and a miss. Strike two. 94 from Vesia on the outside corner. Ball two in the dirt. And this game, like Saturday's game, started in a delay, though today's was much shorter. More than a half hour. Scheduled for 410. Got going at 445. On Saturday was like two hours and 15 minutes we had to wait for the first pitch. A 2-2 pitch from Vesia coming to Merrill. And Merrill hits a base hit into center field. Line drive over the head of Mookie Betts. Thrown back in by James Altman. Lead off batter aboard for the Padres. Well, Merrill's been a very impressive young player. Very. You know, he's 6'3 to begin with. He was a shortstop. I said, well, you know, has the athleticism. They moved him to center field, and he has played a very good center field. Yeah, how many shortstops the Padres have on the roster, yeah, right? I mean, you think about and it. And they're good ones. Yeah, they're really good ones. I mean, Machado now was DH because of the injury, but at third. Bogart's now at second. Tatis now in right. And Kim there, and Merrill. That viewed as the shortstop of the future. That's yeah. a strike to Tyler Wade. Yeah, the other thing about Merrill, too, is that you, you look at a young player and say, you know, this is a very small sample size. You know, that, that's the routine sample size. Yeah. But he appears to have very good instincts. Muncie in on the grass, guarding for the bunt, which is laid down right to Vesia. He can't get Merrill at second. And Freddie Freeman steps on the bag in time to get Wade as Vesia's throw pulled Freddie, or Gavin Lux, rather, who was covering the bag. Back across his body. Play made for the first out. But Merrill now in position to score. Sacrifice bunt. An endangered species. Turn that lineup card over. Xander Bogart's the second baseman. 94. That Where did that miss? That was a fastball right down the, the chute at the top of the zone. Called ball one. Yeah, the, miss was, the, the miss was not on the pitch. <laughs> a 1-0 count instead of 0-1. And a check swing from Bogarts. Did not go. Two balls, no strikes. Vesia looks back at Merrill on second. Resets for Bogarts at the plate. And that's called strike one. The counts, or the calls rather, level out. That one looked inside off the plate. Two and one. Vesia trying to keep the deficit for the Dodgers at three. Six three in the top of the eighth with one down. Three balls, one strike. Change up from Vesia missed. Merrill on second base will turn 21 this coming Friday. Well, you've heard this before a walk for the Padres. As Bogarts takes first base with one out in the top of the eighth inning. Fernando Tatis Jr. Nick Ramirez, another lefty, loosening for the Dodgers in the pen. Down in left field. Vesia facing Fernando Tatis Jr. First pitch up and in. 94 turning Tatis off the plate having him backpedal 
out of the batter's box. He's stepping back in. Dodgers in danger of dropping the first series of this nine-game homestand. Barring a late-inning rally. A strike from Vessia. Call goes against Tatis Jr. A slider down and in. Vessia's 1-1 to Tatis Jr. A piece of it tapped off the plate. Foul. Now, if you've been following the, the pregame coverage, David Vasse bringing up that note that the Dodgers having rain delays on back-to-back -back days for the first time since 1988 when the Padres were in town in April. 88 turned out to pretty be a pretty darn good year for the Dodgers. Trying to repeat that success here in 2024. He definitely went around. Could not hold up on the one-two slider from Vessia. Tatis back to the dugout. Two down in the eighth. Number nine, Jake Cronenworth. That's where you lose your appeal when you're kind of arguing gently or you know, deciprously. If you're arguing about a call that an umpire makes and then you swing the pitch, it's not even close. Two on, two out, Jake Cronenworth. First pitch swinging, popped up. Left side, Mookie Betts running in right beyond the mound. And he secures the final out of the eighth inning. So, two stranded by Alex Vessia. Keep the Dodgers within three. They got six outs to work with. Shohei Otani leads off next on the Dodgers Audio Network. The exclusive home of the Dodgers. AM 570 LA Sports. Now. down by three final two innings here at Dodger Stadium in the final game of this three game series against San Diego six to three they trail the Padres Shohei Otani leading off followed by Freddie Freeman and Will Smith Wandy Peralta left-hander comes out of the Padre bullpen Dodgers saw him in the series opener Mo. Right now, uh, before he can battle out with Otani, he's talking with Brian Knight, the home plate umpire. Uh, not exactly sure what the issue is. Mike Schilt will come out of the Padre dugout. 
and talk with Knight. And Schilt is asking something at Knight, and Knight has his palms to the air. Not sure what the discussion was. Don't know. And again, with the crew chief wearing a mic, might help to turn that thing on and explain when there's confusing situations. Okay, that's that's one thing that, that baseball needs to do. Padre Infield has to set quickly, and Shohei Otani lines the ball off the glove of Ha-Sung Kim, who's basically playing straight up behind second base. A leadoff base hit and a rocket at that off the bat of Otani. Well, uh, maybe don't play umpire Brian and I was just telling Mr. Peraltas that, hey, look, if you give Otani a good pitch to hit, you better protect yourself. You might hit it up the middle. Another lefty, Freddie Freeman. And now oh, there's... And Wandy Peralta is getting rid of baseballs, and now he's being told to kind of keep one, I think. And here comes Schilt. Stop. And, and, and that's Gabe Morales at first base now barking with Mike Schilt, the manager who's upset. Morales has basically had enough of Peralta asking for new baseballs. Morales and Schilt still talking. On the first baseline. Yeah. He didn't like the baseballs. This is not exactly, if you, if you go really back into the memory bank, not exactly uh, the mad Hungarian and, and Bob Engel. As uh, Ira Bosque kept throwing the ball, didn't want the ball, and Engel just kept tossing balls back out to the mound. Here, take this one, take this one, take this one. The Dodgers have the leadoff batter aboard, Shohei Otani. <laughs> With a rocket base hit into center field on in front of Freddie Freeman. The Dodgers trail the Padres 6-3. Now Freddie Freeman hits a liner to Xander Bogarts. He caught it. He dropped the ball on the transfer. Fans roaring because he thought maybe they could inspire the umpire to say that he didn't have control of the baseball. But it's a line out for Freddie Freeman. A tough line out at that because it was another baseball hit very hard. Catch made, ball came out, and the act of transferring the ball to the bare hand. Uh, was thinking, Bogarts was, about throwing back to first to try and double well, off. I'll tell you what, Peralta's made two pitches, and they have both been absolute rockets. Now it's Will Smith's turn. First, Peralta disengages with the mound. Otani goes back to first base. After seeing two lefties, he's got the right-hander in the batter's box and Will Smith. Peralta has not given up a hit to a righty all year. Gets a strike one call and a change-up. Bottom of the zone on the outside corner. So reverse splits for Wandy Peralta, former Yankee. Now with the Padres, here's the pitch to Will Smith. That's outside, one and one. The Dodgers have the tying run on deck with Max Muncy who's taken a page out of Manny Machado's book, splitting the distance between the on-deck circle and the batter's box. Peralta throws back to first to check on Otani. Oh, hey, safe. Peralta is setting for his 1-1 pitch to the Dodger catcher, who bounces a ball on the left side of the infield. No play on Shohei at second. Wade racing across, throwing across to get Will Smith. Otani up to second, but now two out in the eighth inning. Ruben Niebla, the pitching coach, come chat with Peralta. Be left on left. Peralta against Max Muncy. Max one for three in this game. Sandwiched between a couple of pop outs, a two run homer in the fourth that at the time broke a 1 1 tie, putting the Dodgers in front 3 1. The problem, the ball game since, the Padres scored the next five runs in unanswered fashion. Dodgers down to their last four outs in this finale. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Dodgers 
had 38 comeback wins last year. Do some heavy lifting. Not a lot of outs to play with. Closer Robert Suarez getting loose for the Padres. Peralta to Muncy. The first pitch is a strike. Misses was a good pitch from Peralta. Like he got the bottom of the strike zone. Sinker called ball one. Otani on second base. The left handed Peralta brings the ball into his glove, checks on Otani, delivers to Muncie. Puts a soft fly ball, shallow center field. Kim backing up and reaching up to make the grab. So Otani's leadoff base hit. Stranded and wasted by the Dodgers in the eighth inning. The deficit still three. We move to the ninth here at Dodger Stadium. When you want Dodgers, the only home is AM570 LA Sports. Every win. Dodgers behind the Padres 6-3. to three. The Dodgers have issued 13 free passes tonight. Eight of them from the starter, James Paxton, who was not sharp. Battled through five innings. Ground ball, base hit through the right side for Manny Machado on the first pitch of the top of the ninth inning. Facing a new Dodgers pitcher, it's Nick Ramirez. Acquired by the Dodgers at the beginning of the month from the Yankees for cash considerations was recalled yesterday. The left-hander made 32 appearances for the Yankees last season. Struck out 28 batters in 40 and two-thirds innings. Jose Azokar takes a changeup for ball one. Zokar came into the game as a pinch runner. The ball skips away from Will Smith. Manny Machado skips over to second base. 2-0 the count. Zokar came in pinch running for Profar in that three-run seventh inning after Profar unloaded the bases with a double. And Zokar was picked off trying to steal third for some reason. Bears looks at Machado, delivers to Azokar, and he's fallen behind 3-0. A 
13 walks so far tonight. Most in a game for the Dodgers since June 29th, 1962. There's a strike from Ramirez on a sinker that gets his own 3-1. and one. The game was against the Mets. 16 walks that day. Now 14 here tonight. Ramirez lost that sinker arm side. And Azokar takes first base. First and second. Nobody out for San Diego. Hassan Kim, first pitch swinging, fly ball the opposite way to Teoscar Hernandez in right. Andy Machado tags up from second to third. The Padres will have him at the corners. First out for Nick Ramirez in a Dodge uniform. One appearance for him in OKC at the AAA level. Gave up a run in one inning of work. By three, this would be a great time to get the fourth double play of the uh, the evening. Luis Camposano, the batter. Catcher hitting from the right side against the left-handed Ramirez. First pitch roped foul down the left field line. Camposano hit into a double play. Jay Cronenworth has hit into two double plays. Because of the 14 walks, the Padres taking advantage, taking the 6 3 lead. Camposano goes down to try and get a changeup, fouled it back, nothing in two. Well, defensively, I just had a lot of opportunities turned into double plays. There's been a lot of runners on base. Ramirez, an Orange County kid, fires to Camposano. Ground ball to Freddie Freeman, who goes to second. Mookie steps on the bag for one, gets it back to Freddie to complete the double play. So, Rick Monday, again, you got to ask more for these double plays, apparently, because they're giving them to you. I got news for you. Don't let as many runners on base. <laughs> that would be the preference. Now the Dodgers, they need runners on base. They're down 6-3, the bottom of the ninth, after this on the Dodgers Audio Network. The exclusive home of the Dodgers. AM 570 LA Sports. Don't let insurance companies play hardball and take advantage of you in your personal injury case. Trust the team at Jacoby and Myers to level the playing field. With over 50 years of experience and over a billion dollars in settlements, Jacoby and Myers has the knowledge and track record to protect your rights and get you the compensation you deserve. Don't go it alone. Call Jacoby and Myers, the official law firm of the Los Angeles.
Suarez has pitched an inning and a third on Friday night in the series opener. First pitch to Hernandez, a bouncer to third base. Wade calmly throws across. One pitch, one out. Suarez got the win. He reported the final out of the 10th inning. We were tossing a perfect 11th. Padres winning in 11, 8 to 7. And they're trying to win the series against the Dodgers. James Altman steps in against Suarez. Takes the first pitch. It's called a ball. A 97 mile per hour fastball low. Well, the other series, the Dodgers against San Diego before the All Star break. It's May 10th to the 12th down at Petco Park. Outman in front 2-0. Another fastball that missed. This time it was outside from Suarez. Andrew Bogart shaded closer toward first base as the second baseman. And the left-handed Outman. 3-0 to James. And the Dodgers need base runners. Down by a trio. Somehow... Get a couple on and get it back to the top of the order. James knows that, and he takes the 3-0 pitch. He gets the inside corner for a strike. 3-1 the count. Whatever the result, the Dodgers back at it tomorrow night. Jackie Robinson Day at Dodger Stadium with the Nationals in town. Altman swinging away, fouling away at 97-mile-per-hour heater right there in the zone. And now we're full. Yeah, Suarez, you don't have to go up there looking for just uh, change-ups all the time. That's a walk for James Altman. He watched a fastball miss high and outside. Try and push this ball over the hill. Thing snowballing toward a comeback. Kike Hernandez digs in. Get another runner on base. Gavin Lux on deck representing the tying run for the Dodgers. 6 3 game, bottom of the ninth. One out. The pitch from Suarez to Hernandez. It's a strike. Suarez, a three pitch pitcher. Four seam fastball. It's got some gas on it. Sinker and a changeup. There's 0 1 to Kike. That misses low. 1 and 1. Offense trying to pick up the pitching staff. 14 walks, the most by any major league team in a game since a year ago today. The A's walking 17 against the Mets. That's upstairs from Suarez, the four-seamer. Has it been there for Robert Suarez so far? Two balls and a strike on Kike. That right side is available for Hernandez. As Bogarts is basically hugging the bag at second base. Here's the pitch. Fouled away on the right side by Kike. It's now two and two. Breath for Kike Hernandez. He steps back into the batter's box. Suarez retaking his place on the mound. He checks on Outman on first base. Comes set and fires. A ground ball up the middle. Bogarts will step on the bag. An inning ending double play. The Padres come back to win game one, and they come back to win game three, taking the series finale six to three, the final score. Well, you just cannot give free passes. Uh, for the Dodgers, with 14, you start to look at it. You know, that's four innings of outs, opportunities to get outs. Four. And uh, that just extends it a little bit uh, too often. Padres had plenty, of, obviously, as a result. They had 12 different at-bats with runners in scoring position. That has been uh, an issue. Uh, the Dodgers not really coming up with big base hits over the last now nine games in that particular situation. RBI singled by Will Smith in the fourth, the next batter. 
Max Muncy, the two-run home run. That was it as far as the offense of this Dodger ball club. And uh, for James Paxton, who went five innings plus two batters into the six, but gave up eight walks himself. But again, with 14 walks, that is a nightmarish uh, for the pitching staff. And a long, long afternoon and evening also for the defense. Up and down and up and down. Another walk. Whereas Saturday night, the rain delay was worth the wait. Two hours and 15 minutes today.